If you're all ready, we're going to go ahead and start our council meeting. And first, the Pledge of Allegiance is going to be given to us by Teresa Herrera. Uh, she's a student at, at Taft Elementary School, and I believe she is deaf. And so this is a, a wonderful thing that you're doing, Teresa, and we thank you. So go ahead. We'll turn things over to you at this time. Good evening. Speak May into the mic. Good evening, mayors and city council members and members of the public. My name is Teresa Herrera. At this time, I would like to invite you to join me with the flag of a legion. Please rise and place your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Teresa. And now, if you can remain standing, Roger Aragon is going to, uh, our police chaplain is going to give us our invocation. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, as we come together tonight for Santa Ana City business, we thank you and we ask, first of all, for your wisdom. We ask for wisdom upon our mayor, upon our city councils, upon our leaders of Santa Ana, our police chief, fire chief, all those that make decisions that uh, concern this city. We ask that you be with them, you guide them. Let them make the wise decisions to benefit the city for our community. Lord, we thank you for all that you're doing in this blessed city. It's a wonderful city to live in, to work in, to be a part of the community. We thank you for all those that participate, that are a part of it, making this a better place to live. We just ask for your safety, Lord. We ask for safety for our officers, our firefighters, our first responders, those that are involved, Lord. We ask that you keep them safe and protected. We ask that this meeting be blessed of you lord because you ordained the leaders in this place you placed them in the position we ask for wisdom and the, the decisions and that they uh, make for our city we ask this in jesus name amen thank you you may be seated in america if you can come up and join me please Standing to my right is uh, Dr. America Bracho, and this is an honor for me to present this to her. This is the Exceptional Citizen Award. Uh, she's been working uh, here in the city with uh, Latino Health Access. Uh, she's actually the executive director of the organization, and uh, under her leadership, she's uh, created the organization and grown it now to 70 uh, employees. It's been 21 years, and I'll tell you that the work that uh, Latino Health Access does is absolutely unparalleled. Um, I've been out there with America at times, and I've seen that they go not only into residential neighborhoods, they go into apartment complexes, they go into multi-housing areas, they go and they knock on doors, and they knock on a frequent basis, and they reach out to people, and they, and they talk to them. And they try to help them. They try to understand the, you know, their their level of health and any assistance that they may need. And um, and and she's absolutely relentless. And I think that's a very positive quality because when you're fighting against disease, that is relentless as well. And and people in particular, they're sick and don't have access to you know proper health care. Um, you know, they can easily get into a more debilitating condition, a sicker condition, and without help, 
Um, there's sometimes nobody to reach out to uh, individuals in that position, but America is out there. The 70 people that work with Latino Health Access are out there, and I believe she's become a model of, of modern uh, uh, health care. Um, I know that there are many initiatives that she's constantly working on. Uh, one recent one has been a wellness corridor here in, in, in Santa Ana. I know she had many of the council members out there walking with her along with other elected officials. And part of the vision is that we can get people on a regular basis to be active, on a re regular basis to walk, and that we can turn our city streets like in this wellness corridor into an area when in essence it becomes like, like a linear park, if you will because we have not only areas where people can play, but areas where they can sit down, areas where they can have access to water, areas where they can eat healthy food, uh, areas where they can be in touch with the, with the community in all its aspects and enhance the city. So for that and many other reasons, I, I am you know, very honored to present this her, to her today. And before I give her the proclamation, I want her to uh, please uh, say a few words. Dr. America Baracho. Mr. Mayor, City Council members, uh, it's a great honor to be here receiving this recognition. I must say that this recognition goes to the team at Latino Health Access, uh, those 70 individuals that uh, work so hard to improve the communities that we serve and the communities we partner with. And also it goes to the many community leaders, many of them today sitting here, that are transforming this city, uh, including our friends from South, South Coast Repertoire that have been saying uh, all this year with us, Yo soy Santa Ana, y somos Santa Ana. Um, the city and Latino of Access have a long history of collaboration, and, uh, and it has been increasing and getting stronger. Um, under uh, under our mayor, Miguel Pulido, we received support to create the first park in Santa Ana. With the recreation department and also with the city, we have been able to, uh, we are close to open the first park at Roosevelt Elementary. And with the support of the community and many other organizations, we were able to secure open space in Garfield Elementary. But it's, co it's becoming better and stronger. And now with the addition of our new city manager, David Cavazos, and our new chief of police, Carlos Rojas, and I can't believe that I actually know their names. <laughs> that in itself makes me so proud to say that Michelle Martinez has been leading our efforts with the Wellness Corridor. That I can talk about it, all of you, Sal and David and Roman and Angelica even, you know. Uh, it's just amazing, and Vincent Sarmiento, all of them came to, to open the Wellness Corridor. So when you work on a city where you actually get to know the people, sit with them, walk with them, particularly I want to highlight the process for the creation of the strategic plan. I'm proud to say that Santa Ana engaged in a very open process that was inclusive, that heard the community and heard their priorities, and that actually acted on those priorities. And we are very proud because it should be like that. It should be like that. That this city approved the Sunshine Ordinance that was a request of the community, and we need to recognize when the city does the things that need to do. We are very proud of continuing this partnership, and I'm really honored to receive this award today. America, this is uh, an honor recognizing you as an exceptional citizen, and I know that you're a, a medical doctor, and um, I know that uh, when you came to this country, you started really at a, at, a, at a very low level, in a sense, working your way up, and now look where you are, and look what you've done, and look at the beautiful organization, but most importantly, all the people that you help on a regular basis, those people that have obesity or diabetes or glaucoma or you know, uh, you know, cardiovascular disease, uh, 
you're out there on a regular basis trying to bring help to them. And so for that, uh, you know, myself and, and the council salute you and please keep up the great work. Thank you so much, Mayor. Thank you. Carla Nava, if you're here, if you could please come forward at this time. As Carla Nava approaches, let me tell you a little bit about herself. Um, she is a recipient of the 2014 Disneyland Resort uh, Scholarship. And um, she, in essence, is uh, now going to be an ambassador uh, for Disney. I, I believe uh, she's going to be working with Gelsley Mead from the Government Relations uh, Department, as long as with Sashi White um, uh, from the Disney Resort, uh, who's an ambassador. And Sashi is here with us today. Um, Disneyland Resort awards 10 scholarships in the amount of 7,000 each to outstanding graduating high school seniors throughout Orange County. And um, uh, the scholarships are meant to assist students in pursuing higher education by contributing to unmet expenses such as tuition, room and board, lab fees, and books. This year, Carla Nava from Middle College High School was one of, uh, of those recipients. Uh, she is currently completing her senior year in high school and she's gonna be attending Cal State University Chico this fall. Uh, she has volunteered more than 300, uh, 500, th excuse me, 350 hours to Wilson Elementary Think Together program. That is a program where we, in essence, through Think Together, uh, assist uh, students and teachers uh, you know, to learn. And so she, as a student, is helping other students. And that's a beautiful thing. And she's done so well that here Disneyland is recognizing her as one of 10 outstanding seniors in the County of Orange. And, and the fact that she is here and I have an opportunity to present her this award, I'm very, very proud. And so um, I believe I'm gonna present one to, is it to Carla and also to Kelsey Mead and also Sashi White or Sashi? Are you here to say any words on behalf of Disney? I'm just here on behalf of, uh, of Carla. Are you here on behalf of Carla supporting her? Do you want to say a few words before I present your award? Please. Um, it's great. I've been honored to work with the community. Um, I'm very happy to be here today, and I'm thankful for this recognition. It's been great helping my community, and I wish to keep doing that. Carla, thank you, and thank you for those 350 hours and to reach out to our young kids and helping them do better in school. And so for that, and in honor of you receiving this scholarship from Disneyland, uh, I have the honor today of thanking you for your work and presenting you this certificate of recognition dated this 20 day, uh, 20th day of May, 2014, and I wish you well long term into the future. Hopefully you'll remember this day. It'll motivate you and please motivate others so that they can follow in your footsteps and in turn help other students. That's how we build up our community. Thank you, Thank you very much, Carla. Take care. Now with that, Councilman Michelle Martinez, uh, you have the floor. All right, if we could have Valley High School, the cook up of, of, up for change competition, if we could have Lily Gutierrez, Gustavo Ruiz, Josue, and of course, 
our coach, Monica, please come up here. You know, it's really an honor to, to, to have these folks up here again. This is the third year in a row that they've won up this Cook Up for Change competition in culinary arts. And this is not here locally, it's in the entire US. And you know, as we all know, First Lady Obama made a commitment to improving nutritional standards uh, within schools and, and, and what kids are eating. And not too long ago, and are they here? Is anybody here from Northgate Market or from um, Kid Healthy? Santa Ana Valley partnered up with Kid Healthy and also Northgate Gonzalez Market, who I want to give a special shout out to because those folks have been committed to this community. Not only do they have five you know, of their grocery stores here in the city of Santana, but every time, whether it be Christmas or Thanksgiving or the city needs something or Latino Health Access is trying to partner with them, Northgate Gonzalez Market, that family has been committed to this community from day one. And I will say that they have been mistreated in this community, you know, and they've done a lot of great good. And they continue to partner with our young people every year. They give hundreds and hundreds of gifts during the Christmas year, during Thanksgiving, giving and I only could just continue to speak volumes about Northgate Market and I know two three years ago I had the opportunity when they first won the national competition with Monica and we were at the Northgate Gonzalez headquarters in the city of Anaheim unfortunately their headquarters is not in Santa Ana it's a beautiful headquarters in the city of Anaheim and I'll tell you that these kids are doing amazing work but their coach Monica I have to tell you that over the years and even my twin brother who's a chef had the opportunity to, to to, to go to Valley High School and cook up, cook with the kids. But these kids are, remar are remarkable. And I want one of them, and I hope one of them will share their stories and how they actually had interest in wanting to cook and how they started within this program and where they're at now and what they want to do for the future. So with that being said, who's gonna be the brave one to wanting to talk about their story? Great. Hello, my name's Gustavo. Um, the Get closer to the... Hello, my name is Gustavo. Um, kind of the one thing that really inspired me to do this competition is really help my community and improve the lunches we serve out by just serve out. But really, um, sometimes the lunches aren't that healthy and we this competition really gave us an opportunity to really improve them and eat for our fellow peers to eat something healthy and delicious. And that's kind of one of the things that really inspired me. And another thing, well, the people who inspired it is Miss Aguilar and Chef Vince and Rhett, who really taught me a lot and how to really cook and just do all this. And I'm not sure, uh, Monica, if you'd like to say a couple words about the program before I give the certificates of recognition. Um, thank you very much. It's a, a privilege and an honor to be here. Thank you, Michelle. It's. Uh, I've worked with Michelle's brother years ago when we had the old kitchen. Um, he came and volunteered his time and so I always teach the students how important it is to have people skills, communication skills and networking skills and you know working with the chef I didn't know he was Michelle Martinez's brother and then we went to a program a fitness program at Godinez High School and Michelle was there and so the networking continues and here we are today. Um, Henry Drummond said that we're all, we are mosaics of all those who touch our lives. And so that's a testament to all the educators and the city officials and the business partners and our friends and family and loved ones that um, encourage us, inspire, especially the students to be where they are today. And we have a credible team of business partners that without them, I, they just like surround us like angels. Um, public speaking and chefs. We had two chefs in the house today um, training the students on how to um, provide lunches for the teachers so as a fundraiser for us. And so we continue to do things throughout the community. I'm, I'm so very proud of them and we're so very blessed to have the support of everyone in Santa Ana. So thank you very much. Thank you, Monica. And so this year the students won their competition by cooking a delicious meal which consisted of a crispy fish taco known as the kickin' taco with the Ziesta Fiesta salsa and a yummy tummy banana dessert. 
So, so imagine that, having that in high school now today, that's pretty awesome that these kids are actually cooking this kind of food and it's nutrition, it's healthy, and it tastes good. And I personally just want to tell you that I'm very proud of you guys and the accomplishments that you guys have made, not only just at Santa Ana Valley, but the impact that you're making here in all of the city of Santa Ana. We really move forward to, 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 to really push the initiative of health and wellness, and you're practicing and preaching that. And I want to tell you that you are future chefs of America and you know I'm gonna bring my twin brother back he's he's in Long Beach he's a chef over there and he wants to come back I actually saw on his Facebook today that he was at a, a, an intermediate school and my brother has a passion of course he went to school to become a chef but it's these young kids that are the future of Santa Ana that really want to make a huge impact and it wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for teachers like yourself Monica and if it wasn't like the business community whether it be the Santa Ana Chamber of Commerce um, Northgate all this market we need to continue to mentor and groom these young people because they are the future of this city and again I just want to tell you that I'm very proud of you and congratulations and let me give you your certificates of recognition so we're going to go ahead and give this to Santa Ana Valley High School chef team cooking up for change Monica if you could please accept this on behalf of Valley High School great Lily Gutierrez Great, Thank congratulations. You. Gustavo Ruiz. And Jose, how do you pronounce your last name? Swastegui. Josue Swastegui. Yeah. Got it, great. Congratulations. Councilmember Roman Reina is next, and fo followed by that Councilmember Vince Sarmiento. All right, uh, as we get ready, I do have a proc uh, proclamation that I'm going to ask. Our uh, Orange County Fire Authority uh, representative to come on down here. This is the uh, Division Chief Devin Leonard. Come on up. You know, as uh, many know, I'm a youth advocate, and uh, I got my start working with young people in the aquatics field. And as we're getting ready for our summer activities, now more than ever, we need to be aware and, and diligent of uh, the dangers when it comes to aquatics. Uh, so today we're going to be recognizing uh, May 26th through September 1st as Drowning Prevention Awareness for the months here in the city of Santa Ana. For those that are unaware, for children under five, drowning is the number one leading cause of fatalities. And it only happens in a second. So we really need to be uh, watchful when we have our children within the water. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily have to be in a pool. Uh, it can be as small as two inches uh, that this could take place. So anytime we're next to swimming pools or the beaches or lakes, you really wanna be aware of where your children are at and what they're doing. Uh, and be aware if they have bigger brothers that they say they're going to be in charge because again this happens very silently It happens very rapidly and by the time you recognize and realize that your little one is not there There's, not, there's a chance that they'll be under the water. So as the summertime comes uh, uh, rapidly approaches us, we really want to be aware of this uh, so again um, The Orange County Fire Authority along with other fire agencies in Orange County will be taking this opportunity to uh, Increase the public awareness about drowning and the extreme community outreach campaign. Uh, the city of Santa Ana would like to recognize these three months as uh, drowning prevention awareness. And uh, we thank you so very much on the part of myself, the mayor, and the city council. Thank you for, thank thank you for all the work that you do. Great. Great time. Thank you. First of all, Councilman Rimmer, thank you very much for the introduction tonight, for bringing up the water awareness uh, months that we're facing in front of us. 
The reality is that throughout Orange County last year, we had 71 drownings. 35 of those resulted in deaths. And, it, and like Councilman Raymond Reyna stated, the leading cause of death of children under five years old is drowning. It's completely preventable. It doesn't have to happen. So how are we going to prevent it? We start at the very beginning. Make sure we have full pools around, or I'm sorry, fences around our pools. Make sure they're secured so the little toddlers can't get in there. Make sure that when we're, they're in the pool that there's an adult watching them all the time. And if that tragedy does strike and we have it drowning, make sure you know CPR and call 911, activate CPR, and get us in route as fast as we can. So when we're get there, we're trying to get this public message out. We're working with the corporate communication staff of the city, working on a public service announcement that we're going to get out to all the citizens through local media and through our um, media network, the Facebook page for the, for the city and stuff like that. But we can't do that alone. You guys are at the pool. There's an adult with the kids almost all the time. There should always be one there. You've got to be watching the water. You turn around for 20 seconds to, watch, to answer your cell phone, do a text message. That's the 22nd that the child is going to go underwater and potentially not come back up alive. So we need your help with this. Please help us out. You know, just uh, it's very uh, preventable. And one of the West best ways to do that is to learn how to swim. Parks and Rec programs offer uh, swimming lessons at all our facilities. So please register and sign up. Have a safe summer and enjoy. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. And now, uh, Council Member Vince Sarmiento, followed by Mayor Pro Tem Tina Hedo. And I believe Tina Hedo has two presentations, and after that, we're done. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And if I could have the Santa Ana College Circle K Club come and join me. And ex I guess accepting on their behalf, it'll be Min Chow Chow. Al, I see you in the audience as well from the Kiwanis. Why don't you come on up? Come on up and help me give this uh, presentation. Don't be kids. shy. You, nev you never are shy, so don't, uh, don't start now. Um, how many of you know where the barrier-free park is? Okay. Everybody who's going to be accepting the award knows exactly where it is. How about, uh, do you know what the barrier-free park is? Okay, let me tell you a little bit about what that is. And it's a, to me, it's a very special place because um, there's not many of them in the entire state. And what it is, it's a park, an open space, where uh, kids and families with disabilities and special needs can go and enjoy a park space just like we all do. And I think um, you know, as we think about that and as we think about the lack of open space for those of us who want to play uh, football, baseball, soccer, whatever it is, um, we realize that in the special needs community, the demand is even higher because there's so few barrier-free parks like this. And I think it's so important that we um, focus on those needs because we have many, many people in our city that have special needs and have disabilities that can enjoy park sites, that can't enjoy open space like we all do. And I'm very proud of my colleagues and very proud of the city because we just recently cut the ribbon on a development that was a, a 42 new construction site um, special needs project uh, that was also affordable. So that shows that the city is committed to making sure that we have uh, resources, that we have um, uh, residential spaces, but now we wanted to highlight what Circle K has done because it's significant. It's significant because not only do we need places to live, but we need places to play for this community, for the special needs community that um, is so important. Many of you who were here who saw and heard the, uh, the young lady who, who gave the Pledge of Allegiance. She was disabled. She was deaf. And to me, it's so important for us to recognize um, you know, the successes that we've had, and this is one of them, because there's very few cities in the state that do this. And I just want to applaud you, and please join me in applauding the Circle K Club for doing what they do uh, in making the Barrier Free Park a beautiful place. So let me tell you a little bit about what they did and who they are. The Santa, Ana, the Santa Ana College Circle K Club was established in 1965, and they've been a very, they played a very important role here in the city. Through their leadership and the, and the leadership of, the, of Min Chow Chow, uh, the Circle K Club repainted the fence that surrounds the, um, the Barrier Free Park. And if you see it, it's a beautiful fence. It looks great. I think I was out there, was it a year ago that you, that you started? 
it took a whole year to do that, and they did it very nice because, look, it's such a special place, you want it to look nice. And sometimes things age and they corrode and wrought iron fences, you know, they start uh, rusting. And so they took the time out of their busy schedules to come out because they realized that when you have something special, you want to maintain it in that condition. So uh, it's an alternative, it's, a, it's, uh, it's aimed at offering an alternative for kids with special needs all over the county. And so it's one of the first accessible parks in the country. So not only are we doing things that are groundbreaking for the state, but it's really nationally as well. Um, Circle K, the club, has been involved in many community service projects, and they do a lot of humanitarian efforts, and this is just one of them. But to me, it's significant because I know that my wife sits on the board of directors at the Dale McIntosh Center that represents and advocates for families and kids with special needs. So anytime we can do something to help, like you all did, it's very important, it's very significant, and just uh, look at these faces because they made a difference in our community. And that's something that I think all of us need to applaud and recognize, and we have something very special for them, which is a certificate of recognition. So, <laughs> and as one of my former colleagues would say, it looks like it's gold leaf, but it's not. So, um, uh, really, but what it is, it's a symbol of the gratitude that we have for what you've done. And back there, trying to hide behind everybody, is... Uh, uh, Alfredo Amesqua, and he is the president of the Kiwanis Club here, the, Kiwana, the, the Santa Ana chapter, and Al has been very, very instrumental in, you know, putting forward this effort. The Kiwanians, and I was a Kiwanian uh, in the past as well, involves itself, you know, all over the world in humanitarian efforts. But our local chapter has been, has been especially effective in doing th in things to improve um, the lives of our residents, the lives of everybody here, and improving the quality of life for everybody. So, Al, thank you for your stewardship of that great organization. And please give him a round of applause for everything that he's done. And it's a great fellowship. It's a great partnership that we have. The Kiwanians go way back in this city. They have deep roots and um, they do great work. And, and, and Circle K being here, I know you'll jointly agree with me that uh, what they've done here at the Barrier Free Park is something very incredible. So let me give this to somebody who could share a little bit more with us. Um, and Min Chao, would you uh, join me at the floor? And the floor is yours to go ahead and talk a little bit more about the Barrier Free Park and the work. We're very proud of that park. I've seen students play on there. I've seen everyone access, use that park daily. And it's, it's a great pride in our city and for us, too. So about a year and a half ago, it was just an idea. It was just a thought that we need to redo this to make it look prettier, to be more inviting. So we started. Um, we started, and we kept going at it, and we kept going at it, and we finally finished. It would not have been possible without, like they said, the Kiwanis Club of Santa Ana. Um, we had thousands upon thousands of volunteer hours, not just from our home club, but from the Circle K chapters at UCI, at Cal State Fullerton. So it was really a huge, huge community effort. And it was a great project. We're looking for somebody else to do now. <laughs> Thank you. That sounded like an open invitation, so that may be dangerous. We may take you up on that. Right, right? Because I see, I see I'm at Dr. Amedi Cabracho saying, you know, we, we, we might find some, something to fill your time with. Al, would you like to say something on behalf of the Kiwanians? And, you know, I know that uh, the Kiwanians actually, you know, initiated and founded the park and did the effort. Circle K Club, obviously, is making sure that it's beautiful and it maintains uh, itself in the condition that we all wanted it to be. But, Alec, why don't you go ahead and say a few words on this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, uh, council members. Uh, this is a very special moment for us because our club, the Kiwanis Club of Santa Ana, have been sponsoring this wonderful club from Santa Ana College, which, by the way, I'm, I'm also a product of. We want to make sure that they develop a sense of commitment a sense of community and making sure that when they graduate and they become the greatest attorneys and the doctors and the engineers, they're going to come back to Santa Ana, right? Yeah. All right. So, so uh, um, I just want to let you know that um, our club in Santa Ana has been around for 96 years, okay? 
I'm not that old, but I wasn't. Uh, and that uh, we want to make sure that we continue the partnership that we have with the city, that we continue the partnership that we have with our local government, with our uh, uh, industry in here in Santa Ana, because we provide the kinds of uh, services and assistance that many low-income members of our community needs. For instance, we provide scholarships. Over the last few years, we have essentially have gave, uh, essentially we have honored the students all from Santa Ana with over one million dollars of scholarships. And so that's something that we do that on a yearly basis and that uh, we also provide services to special needs children. This effort that we're doing for the Free Barriers Park is only one of the efforts where we provide many entertainment uh, uh, activities, many projects at, the, at our local Santa Ana Unified School District and um, uh, we're very proud of the things that we do with the city of Santa Ana. In fact, our city manager most recently was one of our keynote speakers, and he did well, by the way. <laughs> and so, thank you so very much, and again, all the credit should go to the wonderful students that are present today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Al. And Min Chao, do you mind uh, uh, accepting this on, on, our, on your behalf and on behalf of the Circle K Club? Certificate of Recognition awarded to the Santa Ana College Circle K Club in recognition of your dedication to community service. Thank you for your hard work and contribution for the Kiwanis Barrier Free Park. Well done. Thank you very, very much. Now I'm going to turn things over to Mayor Pro Tem, Sal Tinajero, and uh, I believe first it's going to be Public Works Week, so if we have somebody here accepting that award from uh, our Public Works, William, are you here, or who's going to be presenting, or accepting? What, whoever it is, come on down, and after that he's going to be recognizing a uh, special uh, recipient, I think, along with Councilor Sarmiento for Harvey Milk Day. So right now, um, I'll turn things over to him, and I believe William's already ready to come on down. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's always wonderful to give out so many awards and recognitions here at, uh, at our monthly meetings, but it's important to understand that all of these awards and people that you see are a central part of that jigsaw puzzle that makes the city great and that continues to improve it. This is something that when you walk out the door, the award that I'm going to be giving out tonight, the proclamation I'm going to be giving out tonight, is something that really is what I think people um, either value or describe or they see or they appreciate or embrace, and that is creating a high quality of life here in Santa Ana. And I believe as, as an elected, as a council member, that our residents always will judge you based upon what happens when they open their door and what they see in the front yard. If they see good streets, they're happy with it. If they see the trash being picked up, they're happy with that. If lights work, you're happy with that. And so today I want to go ahead and bring up our Public Works uh, who's gonna, Director, William Galvez, who's going to be accepting this award. If you can come on up, please. But let me just read a few key points. Public Works is, a, is vital to the safety, health, economy, and overall well-being of the Santa Ana community. Public work agencies provide innovative and creative projects and services to Santa Ana residents. Public work agencies strive to protect and enrich the Santa Ana community through the eff efficient delivery of services and maintenance of public work infrastructure, development, and planning services. The facilities and services from public works agencies are provided by dedicated personnel. And in essence, the, the, the award that we're giving tonight is also an award to our employees who come in day in and day out, work long hours after having many budget cuts, and still provide those services. This year's celebration theme is Building for Today, Planning for the Future, and 2014 marks the 54th Annual Public Works Week sponsored by the American Public Works Association. So today, I would like to present our director, 
who's been doing a heck of a job, Mr. William Galvez, and I would like him to say a few words today. Thank you, William. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Tinajero. This is uh, National Public Works Week. That's this week. And uh, so uh, on behalf of Public Works employees here in Santa Ana, I accept this proclamation. And I just wanted to add that, uh, generally speaking, when we're doing a good job, you don't know it. You don't know that, uh, that we're doing a great job. You turn the water on, water runs. You flush the toilet, it works. You're driving the street and everything flows. And it's when, only when something is wrong that you notice us. And unfortunately, sometimes you also notice us when we're actually out there doing our job and improving streets. Whenever they're under construction, we, we try to get it done quickly and get out of your way. Uh, so we try to do the best we can, and I'm really proud of the folks here in Santa Ana. Uh, the Public Works employees in Santa Ana, uh, they do a great job. So on behalf of uh, the Public Works employees, I accept this proclamation. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Can we take a picture? Thank you, William. And when I flush my toilet tonight, I'll think of you. <laughs> oh, Lord. You have to do that sometimes. You know, it's a long meeting and so forth. Um, I'd like to call up our uh, council member, Vince Sarmiento, and we have a special proclamation as well today uh, uh, to present uh, on behalf of the Harvey Milk Day. Uh, that's, gonna, that's on May 22nd. If we could have Miss Katie Barraza come on up. And as she's coming up, I'll just uh, put out a few facts out there. <clears throat> in 1977, Harvey Milk was elected to the San Francisco Board of Supervisors and became the first openly gay person to be elected to a prominent political office. We're talking about a time where people would get, lose their jobs for being gay and sometimes even be arrested for, for being gay and being public about it. In 2009, President Barack Obama awarded Harvey Milk with the Presidential Medal of Freedom for his contribution to the gay, to, to the gay civil rights movement. Harvey Milk inspired many people, locally and nationally, to, to live openly to create a world free from prejudice. Uh, obviously, he's not with us today, but I think he would have been overjoyed to see the strides that we are making in a, as a society. I believe it was just today or yesterday that other uh, bans on gay marriage were struck down in the state of Oregon and the state of Pennsylvania, if I'm not mistaken. It, but it's not over. And let's not pretend that, it's, that gays in America have the same rights as heterosexuals in America because they still don't. There's still work to be done. And that's why it's important to celebrate days like Harvey Milk Day, and that's why my, count, my colleague, uh, Council Member Sarmiento, and myself have been adamant in making sure that we continue to celebrate it, we continue to say that message, because we need to keep his memory alive, we need to keep the work that he has done alive for the future generations. And what a great thing it is to have a role model like Harvey Milk, but also know that others are coming behind him and have come behind him because of what he first started. So his life was taken for the positions that he held and the office that he held. And tonight we celebrate his memory and his hard work. Mr. Councilman Sadmian. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. And I think um, he said it all and he captured it well. Uh, it's an honor for us to be doing this now, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. How many years have we been doing this now? About maybe three or four? And we were inspired by our five already. Okay. Um, we see Dave, Darren, Desi, I see back there. They all serve to inspire us to make sure that we don't neglect or ignore these dates because there were communities in the past that didn't want to do this. And I'm, I'm very pleased and proud to say that Santa Ana was one of the first cities in the county to say, this is important. Let's make a big deal about it. Let's make sure that our families and our children understand the legacy of who Harvey Milk was and what positions he took, and ultimately what cost him his life. So I think it's important for us to take a moment to reflect and pause and, and, and realize the significance of this life that, um, 
that uh, he led, fighting for social justice, fighting for fairness, but also uh, fighting for tolerance. And I think that's what we all need to understand, is that we may be passing laws trying to reduce the discrimination that there is, the overt discrimination, but there still is subtle discrimination. There is still ways to make a person feel inferior or less because of, um, because of their orientation. And that's something that we all as a community, we all as a, as a city, need to stand up against. And that's what these moments are for. For us to realize and when we see something, call it out and take these moments to say this is important. So I'm very proud to stand here with my colleague and the rest of the city council that's unanimously supported everything that we've done to call attention to Harvey Milk as a person, but more the symbolism that it represents, that we need to respect each and every one of us in our community. So I know that this is going to be celebrated on the 22nd, on the 22nd as well at the Frida Theater in downtown, but we wanted to do it here at the council because it's become a tradition now for five years. And it's important that those of us who can't join us here um, you know, in council chambers at home can listen to this and realize that it's an important thing that we're doing. So Mayor Pro Tem, I know you have the proclamation in your hand. Katie, why don't you join us up here and tell us a little bit more about the 22nd and what's going to happen, but more so uh, please receive this on behalf of um, everybody who's fighting for social justice here in the city. Thank the floor you. is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for this honor. Um, in an ongoing discovery of how best to serve the needs of community, I strive to emulate the works of Harvey Milk, and I continue his legacy. There are no reliable statistics on how many lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender seniors reside in Orange County. I do know that every Tuesday, Wednesday morning, and Thursday evening, our meeting room is full of vital, fascinating LGBT seniors needing socialization and other support services. The continued support for rights and recognition for equality will remain my goal. I would like to thank the Gay and Lesbian Community Service Center and the Center OC for giving me the opportunity to pursue my passion and all of the seniors that continue to inspire me. I accept this recognition in the name of Harvey Milk and for all of those who continue to work for human rights. Thank you. Before I present this award to Katie, uh, I wanted to thank uh, Dave and Darren because my son actually took your advice. My son is, uh, came out to me about two years ago, and he's been coming to our pride of, gay pride events here in Santa Ana, and they told him, you need to ditch your dad and go by yourself. So this last weekend, he went out to Long Beach with his friends and had a great time. He sent me a picture back uh, holding the rainbow flag with his friends. And I, had, I, I, couldn't, I, I couldn't help myself. I had to post it up on social media. And I said, you know, if God is perfect, then I am grateful that he sent me a perfectly gay son. And I told him that I loved him. So I thank you guys for this. Thank you. And on behalf of the city council, we want to keep this tradition alive so that Harvey Milk's uh, memory is never lost. And we present you with this today. And thank you for all the work you do, Katie. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mayor Pro Tem and Councilor Sarmiento, and thank you, Katie, for all the great work that you do, and your family as well. I know, uh, you know, Greg is here. I know where Dakota is, but the Saws is here, and I know that they need to be thanked as well because they support your efforts very, very much. So, so with that, um, I'm going to move our attention to the uh, 
uh, a consent calendar. And before that, Madam Attorney, do we have anything to report out of closed session, please? Uh, Mayor, we had several closed session item discussions, but we do not have any reportable action on those items. Thank you. So with that, um, if I can have a translator down for Manuela Lopez, but Manuela, before you, um, Clark uh, uh, Clazer, if you're here, come on down. And then Joshua Wayne Moore, come on down. And when we have the translator, I'll call Manuela Lopez back. Clark, are you here? Come on down, please. And Joshua Wayne Moore, if you're here, come on down. And Irma, how do we, you're going to be after, after uh, Wayne. So Clark, why don't you speak? And Manuela Lopez, are you here? Manuela, come on down. And then we'll have a translator for you in a moment. Please go ahead, Clark. Uh, good evening, uh, city council members and Mayor uh, Polito and our new city manager. Speak into uh, the mic, please. And our new city manager. Uh, thank you all for the privilege of speaking here. Uh, I'm a, a member of uh, Sacred, a, a group here in the city that has worked with city council, and they have seen fit to do some really great things. We were so happy to see the funding that's been approved for programs to benefit the residents. Like code enforcement, what a dire need we've had for quite a while now for more code enforcement. The public, the public viewing portals where the residents can see what the city council is doing, what the mayor is doing. Uh, it just lets everybody have a view. Health and wellness uh, access points. What's more needed in this city for people who have to, <coughs> excuse me, have to have medical care, can't afford it, don't know where to go? That's going to change. Also, the arts and uh, culture uh, portion of our city received uh, <coughs> new funding, internship uh, programs, that's just so necessary for our young folks to be able to go and learn and make a little money too. So those are all great things that we have seen you uh, put forth and, and, and take over in our new five-year plan. Uh, I'm looking forward to so many things. This meeting was so excited, Dr. America Bracho from L LHA, uh, amazing lady, and the chefs at Valley High, <coughs> excuse me, scholarships being awarded, and then to see uh, Harvey Milk remembered. That's just very moving. The whole meeting was, I think, very exciting and from great people. So as a member of Sacred, I can say we are very pleased, very happy with the things that have been accomplished in relation to the five-year plan. Uh, still, for us at Sacred and so many other groups in uh, the city with whom, whom we are affiliated, there is a dissatisfaction with the connection of ICE to the city jail of Santa Ana. It's like a cancer eating from the inside. We will continue to be vigilant on this issue. We look forward to continued co conversations with all of you dealing with this issue as time goes by. We believe with you, we can find an equitable solution that in time can release Santa Ana to benefit the people and most of all, their families. Clark, in, your, your light is red, so let me thank you for your comments. Any system that breaks families is a broken system itself, and uh, that's... Thank a, you, Clark. That, thank you. Uh, Joshua, more, you're next, and Emanuela, you'll be right after Joshua. Please more, go ahead, Joshua. Joshua Moore. Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor Polito and council members. Thank you uh, for having the meeting this evening. Um, I'm a local artist in Santa Ana, and over the years I've, I've come to realize a marketplace, a village is not just a place to live 
and work and buy groceries or clothing, but a place uh, that a family or a group of, of friends can come to and progress in their dreams and build a community that is conducive for bonding healthy, well-crafted styles of life. Um, it's not about this collective or this association or this gallery or that artist or this council or this city council or that budget. It's about creating a place to be able to exchange ideas and information and knowledge about our cultures, many that they are and hard to in intermingle. But I truly believe that we have the ability to create our own destinies, even through the trials and tribulations that we might face, uh, through the gentrification issues or the urban, urban revitalization projects. We need jobs for, we need jobs, we need low income housing, education, financing for artists and for for people of the like. Um, we must stand for something or someone will represent it for us. And this is why I believe the Arts and Culture Commission should be fully funded to help the artists create a more beautiful Santa Ana. We need more organization among us to become a, a, a hopefully so a world-class city, more transparency of where money is being spent and who is spending it. We have to create trust between our civil servants, the private and public citizens of our city that elected you all. So I implore you to ensure our Arts and Culture Commission is allocated the correct amount of money to ensure the future of arts in Santa Ana can breathe and explore a never before seen art community. And so there's there's a lot of things going on in the community right now, um, a lot of bickering, a lot of, of arguing between certain artists and certain bars and associations and collectives and, and things of this nature that I, I feel as if um, don't need to necessarily happen. I, I know that money being allocated at certain areas and certain places and wards and things of that nature can um, help out some things as far as financing and, and housing and, and things of that nature. But there has to be a way that that we can communicate um, communicate the artists in the community, the the senior citizens in the community, the 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 kids in the community, the middle aged people, whatever may have you, can be able to communicate with each other and figure out how we can how we can more beautify the city and hopefully, you know, become a, 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 a city to, 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 to be able to have some sort of representation to where other cities would want to come here and, 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 and trade with us and be able to do certain things. And I think that the artists and, and their community do have the, the ability to, to, beautify this, um, to beautify this beautiful city that we all live in and th that I believe that we adore. And, and I think that there, there is a way that we can communicate with one another and open up conversation and be able to, and be able to represent ourselves and, and our beliefs and our culture. And whether it's through an Arts and Culture Commission or, or th through whatever organization that we can create, I just think that we can, we can do it civilly and, and with some sort of due process for each one of us. Thank you, Joshua, and right, thank, thank you, you for your work in the community. Manuela Lopez. Followed by Irma Harawi. Buenas noches. Buenas noches, a señores miembros del concilio. Mi nombre es Manuela López. Esta noche queremos reconocer la coalición Sacred y Comunidades Saludables a todos ustedes por el trabajo que se realizó en el plan estratégico para que se tomara en cuenta las recomendaciones de la comunidad y haya sido repartido a las necesidades de la ciudadanía de Santa Ana. Yo como una persona que llevo muchos años involucrada en mi comunidad, me he dado cuenta del avance que hemos tenido. Ya hace un tiempo trabajamos ustedes, el distrito escolar y la comunidad, para que se pudiera abrir la escuela Roosevelt, porque no teníamos parques. Entonces, se, se logró que los fines de semana se abriera, la cual necesitábamos mucho. Asimismo, seguimos trabajando para que también ya muy pronto tengamos un parque y centro comunitario en esa misma área. Y lo más importante, vamos a tener la, la librería electrónica. Eso es algo que nuestra comunidad agradecerá, porque nuestros niños, jóvenes y también los adultos aprovecharemos al máximo. Esos son algunos de los casos en los que hemos visto que de verdad trabajando ustedes, nosotros y la comunidad, hemos hecho realidad muchas cosas buenas. Así que solo me resta decirles gracias por su apoyo, entrega y capacidad para comprender a nuestra comunidad que está allá afuera, viendo todas las cosas buenas que ustedes hacen y seguirán haciendo. Y por último, esperamos que en el futuro sigamos trabajando juntos para un mejor futuro en Santana. Gracias. 
Good evening, members of the council. Uh, my name is Manuela Lopez, and tonight I'd like to recognize, uh, re recognize you on behalf of the Sacred Coalition and Building Healthy Communities for the work that was done regarding the strategic plan and for taking into consideration the input of the community and the needs of the citizens of Santa Ana. And I, as a person who's been working many years involved in the community, I have realized the progress that we have made and uh, because we have worked together for, for some time now and with you, the school district, and the community to open the Roosevelt Park and because uh, the, the Roosevelt Park during the weekends, uh, which we needed uh, so much. And also, we continue to work so that we now soon will have a park and a community center in the same area. And the most important thing is that we will have an electronic uh, library. And this is something that our community thanks you for because our children, our youth, and our adults uh, will be able to take advantage of these. And these are some of the things that, we've, that I've seen and that we are working together with you and with the community and made this possible, uh, these great things. And now, the only thing I have left to say is to thank you for your support, for your commitment, and your capacity to understand our community. And the, um, the community that is out there is looking at you, all the good things that you are doing and that you will continue to do. And finally, we expect to be working together, to continue working together in the future for a better Santa Ana. Thank you. Maharawi, followed by Jose Rea. Hello, good evening, uh, council members, uh, city manager, uh, mayor, um, hello, everybody. Uh, I've known you for so long. Uh, I'm very, very happy to hear and see that the strategic plan is getting approved, that we have been in our corridor included. Thank you. We are expecting a wow from you. We, we were having the park. We have united, all of us, in all the four core in the corridors of Wilshire Square, Madison, Henninger, and East Side, together with the merchants. We are all friends. We are holding hands and waiting for a wow. South Main uh, Corridor with our beautiful marquee, when you come in, it has to be wow. It has to be that welcome to Santa Ana. And we're hoping and waiting for the plans. We will also be g gathering together to give input, to give our designs. You've requested from us so many times, and we're working now together. Uh, we have formed an alliance so we can give you our dreams, our ideas. Thank you for coming to our meetings, because that's what we're doing. So we are hoping to see investment, not only in time and your effort, which you have been in all our meetings, but also in true funding so we can have that uh, quality that we have always talked about. So there's value not only visually, but that includes property values, that includes safety, that includes uh, traffic. We've been talking to the principals of the school and the churches, so I, we want to just encourage you and thank you again for including us in the park, but we're expecting a wow going forward. Thanks, have a great evening. Jose Rea. So, um, yes, uh, good evening, and I want to echo the uh, words of Irma and others about your vision, and thank you for the funding for the Pacific Electric Park and the great, great community um, garden that you ha we have now at Madison. So that's, that's great big steps. But I'm here to talk a little bit about safety. On May 5th, um, a man was killed crossing Hobart Street from the bike trail, the Pacific Electric Bike Trail. And so we have unsafe streets. We have unsafe parks. Uh, Madison Park is not a safe place. Uh, people don't visit the park because it's not a safe place. And people don't bike to Main Street because it's not a safe place. We don't walk to Main, Main Street because it's not a safe place. So we would like to see you put a little bit of teeth behind the words that are on the strategic plan for the five years. You need to find safety um, funded. Um, and, and then also um, we are working with the merchants, but we would like to see that really 
become uh, facts, not just something that is in writing and, and not something that is, doesn't allow the people in the neighborhoods to feel safe. So thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Mr. Rea. Uh, Janelle Hardy, please, if you could come on up, and followed by uh, Sandra Pochapena. Go ahead, Ms. Hardy, whenever you're ready. Uh, good evening, council members. Um, my name is Janelle Hardy, and as some of you know, I live in Henninger Park neighborhood. Um, one of our boundaries is South Main Street, and um, I've been in Henninger Park for 27 years, so I'm always looking at South Main. I love our archway that announces our historic uh, South Main business district, and um, I just want to let you know that um, keeping it neat and tidy um, is really important to all of us, even though maybe we don't say anything. Uh, it's a, we're looking to be healthy. It's a great corridor to walk up and down. And we're looking for opportunities to, to make it look good. And if you have any ideas, let us know. And in turn, we'll let you know our ideas on what can be done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, is Ms. Pocha Pena here? She's coming in. Okay, I'm going to go to the next speaker, and then she'll be the one right after that. Uh, Victor Payan, is he here? Oh, Victor. Hi, hello, Council, City Manager. Um, Ed, we're, I'm here to um, also uh, support the full funding of the arts in the five-year plan uh, and, and thank the Council for having gone through the process of, re of revisiting the allotments and, and coming to the, uh, the amount that was originally um, allotted. Uh, the arts, as you know, was a, was a very popular um, uh, element of the strategic plan and was its own pillar. And when it was taken out as its own pillar, the justification was that it would be transcendent to all the other disciplines. And at the funding of, of 175 for the uh, Arts Commission and the strategic plan, or the, the, the master plan, uh, and the funding of $100,000 for the arts uh, co collaborations, that gives you the tools to reach into um, economic development, to reach into youth services and education, et cetera, which you wouldn't have otherwise. And I think that it's very critical at this moment that we've all worked together to create something, uh, a structure that works, that's great, that we can all commit to something and a, and a path that's great. We have the tools, the resources, the commitment from the community, and um, you know, and I, I want to thank the mayor for uh, writing a letter to the state in support of funding at the state level, uh, increased funding for the arts. So I, I hope that we can uh, count on that kind of support for ourselves locally. We're ready, as I've said many times, to turn on that engine of economic development. You don't want to have an engine where you pull out one spark plug and then, you know, think it's going to run run efficiently. Um, we had a nice meeting with a developer about some plans that they have in one of the developments that's coming up that does include the arts. So people are listening. The developers are listening. The businesses are listening. Sandra um, is just coming back from uh, t speaking at a summit with um, local business uh, leaders. And so, um, like I said, I think that just having the tools to do the job that we need to do, we can do something great, create jobs, generate revenue for the uh, entire city, put Santa Ana, Santa Ana on the map regionally, and um, that today is the day we decide what we're going to do, and let's give ourselves a tool, especially because the Arts Master Plan is a one-year allotment to really create the kind of plan that's going to resonate through the next five years and put us where we want to be economically, culturally, and um, and uh, you know, to, to the betterment of the people, you know, helping youth, helping uh, bring down crime rates, helping uh, support businesses. That we have the tools at our disposal, and I'm, I'm uh, you know, reaching out to you to vote the full amount, uh, and let's do something great together. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Pocha Pena, and also following her, we will have uh, Ms. Sharon Barlow. You're just Miss Speaker all over the place tonight. <laughs> <laughs> hello, I want to uh, say hello to our city manager, um, our Mr. Mayor somewhere, and uh, all our city the, council the real members. real cool ones here. It's the Mayor Pro Tem. The, the Mayor Pro Tem. All right. Well, hello, <laughs> Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, and our city staff, of course. Um, I'm here to speak on the issue of uh, the uh, funding for the arts. I believe it's 65, I think it's uh, number 65, well I'm talking about 5A and 5C. 
I uh, just want to encourage this uh, body to approve the full amount of arts funding. I've been involved with the arts for, I don't want to date myself, but at least 25 years now in this city and certainly have seen uh, you know, just how much marketing happens as a result of the arts. Anyone that checks out a Craigslist ad or goes on Redfin, is looking for a house, LoopNet, looking for a commercial property, um, or just looking to relocate a business, proximity to the artist's village is always mentioned, always says this house is convenient to the artist's village, this apartment is convenient to the artist's village, this business is located in the famous artist's village. And after almost 30 years of investment by our local artists and regional artists, you know, the return that our creatives have gotten has been, has been very minimal. Uh, you know, a, a lot of our elder artists that are now entering into their mid and late 50s, getting ready to retire, you know, they, you know, they really haven't, they don't have that kind of security that, for, for, that maybe another industry, like for example, if we had invested in tech or if you go up to Silicon Valley, you know, uh, when they brought in all these great new tech companies, once all the property values started to rise, they didn't say thank you very much tech companies, you've done a great job increasing property values, now you gotta go, we're making it restaurant row. They don't do that with other businesses. Even here in Anaheim, uh, we have our own Silicon Alley here in Anaheim, and uh, those businesses have, you know, the, the more they thrive, the more successful they get, then they reap the benefits of that work. So, um, you know, funding the arts, especially when we have uh, Arts Commission for the very first time in our city, um, I believe when we, uh, this body was considering forming the Arts Commission, the amount that was thrown out uh, was $90,000. It would cost $90,000 just to just for basic operations of the Arts Commission. So to fund it at 100, at the full 175, would enable that it could run um, efficiently, that it could do the kind of outreach it needs to do, um, and uh, you know offer the services that this community has has really sorely needed, and certainly will pay off in spades because a healthy, thriving arts community in Southern California, which is really a hub for global arts and culture production, um, and cinema and media and all those great uh, creative industries, it really, you know, since we're a heartbeat from Hollywood, it really benefits us to have a strong creative industry here in the city. So I really hope that you'll fund it to the full capacity. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Sharon Barlow, followed by George Estrada, please. Good evening, Council, Mayor, City Manager. I was down in a meeting today at Chapter One for lunch and saw you out there walking around visiting. And, and um, I, I am so grateful that you What time are... was it? Was he supposed to be at work? I'm kidding. He was, he was working. working. He was he working. He was working. Are you kidding me? And um, so we're grateful that, that you are out there and, and um, meeting with anybody that asked you for a meeting, so thank you. And um, we're excited to see what you bring. But more excited, obviously, I'm here today um, as president of the South Santa Ana Merchants Association and thankful again that we're on that strategic plan, but we need to be on the funded side. Um, like Irma said, you know, we have the Cicla Via coming, Samos, October 5th. We want people to see that wow in the corridor, okay, a wow. We want them coming back in that corridor. We love our neighborhoods, and we want to give our neighborhoods what they need in that corridor. And I want to be able to go to a meeting on our corridor, not have to go somewhere else. We love our downtown, obviously, um, but we want that there, too, on our corridor. So just please give us that wow that we're looking for and give the residents what they need that will increase their property values here and bring revenue and jobs into this city. So, thank you. Thank you very much, Sharon. And now, George Estrada, followed by Keith uh, DeWine, please. On uh, agenda item 65B, City Council will be voting on a proposal to place a ballot measure asking voters to allow members of the City Council to receive a higher compensation and eliminate the $1,000 contribution restriction in the 
$250 contribution restriction. In my opinion, eliminating this these restrictions will further corrupt city politics. Lobbyists and developers will increase their influence in city decisions. As far as increasing compensation for members of the council, some of the information on the staff report is misleading. Santa Ana council members do not receive only $125 per month and the mayor $250 per month. Part-time council members receive, in addition to the monthly salary, benefits like medical, dental, life insurance, a $6,000 annual auto allowance, stipends for attending the, the house, housing authority meetings, plus other stipends for attending other boards and commissions. Michelle Martinez receives the most stipends for attending numerous commissions and boards. The staff report names 12 cities, six of these cities in Orange County as having the lowest compensation for elected officials. They deliberately left out one city in Orange County, the city of Tustin. In 2012, the city council of Tustin placed before city voters a ballot measure to eliminate all compensations and benefits for council members. The measure was passed with a wide margin. Tustin part-time council members are only reimbursed for out-of-pocket expenses. There is no justification for increasing the council members' compensation. If council members are unhappy with the current compensations and benefits, why do they keep running for re-election? Thank you. Keith, followed by Dylan Thompson. Good evening, council members. Um, I have a question for you guys. Has anything um, other than the arts brought in more people and more commerce to the city of Santa Ana in its entire history since it's been a city? Michelle? Please. We don't we Just don't keep respond. talking. We, we're not going to answer. answer. Just give us so, your thoughts. Okay. I don't think anything has. Speak into the mic, please. Okay. I don't think anything has. And I'm looking at the budgets, and I see two columns of recommendations. And one for the Arts and Culture Commission, and to create a master plan is at $175,000. The other one is a recommendation um, to knock it down to $75,000. In addition, I see um, to promote the arts and culture by participating um, artists and groups at $100,000, and then I see it knocked down to $30,000. Now, if the arts has brought in more commerce and more people into the city, why would it even be considered to be cut or dropped down? Um, that's a big issue. And I think the arts have done more for the city of Santa Ana than anything else has. And it shouldn't even be a consideration to do any kind of budget cuts to the arts. Um, I see that the money for the police department um, initially wasn't funded, but then was raised to 250. And that money, it looks like, was going to be moved from the arts to the police department. Now, $250,000 isn't a lot to the police department. But it makes huge changes when you apply it to the arts. And it brings more people to the city. It brings more interest. In addition, we need some sort of a commissioner for housing. I have gone to almost 30 meetings begging and pleading for affordable housing for the arts. This is a conversation that goes back almost 15 years. And I'm not seeing any progress. Over the past two years, I have busted my hump for affordable housing for the artists. Um, I have an article right here um, talking about Santa Monica. They were going to tear down their Bergamot Station, which is their major arts district, and build housing and retail spaces. 
the residents started to see the value of the arts. And at the last minute, voted not to tear down Bergamon Station, which has over 20 art galleries, and has Artists Live Work Studios, and has other art-related organizations housing. I would hope that the City Council would step up to the plate, especially on the affordable housing, perhaps hire someone for it, and make it a priority Mr. because... If you could wrap up. Your, okay, I will wrap it up real quick. I just took in, because they closed down the Spurgeon building, I took in a refugee artist into my studio for six months. But I'm losing my own space at the end of the year. And I'm not seeing the support from the city council for artist housing and for the arts. I want to see it. I want to feel it. I want to be able to go down to Newport Beach when I talk to the former mayor, sir, Mayor Bromberg I, I need you to, in I, Newport I need you to and brag about it. Thank you, sir. Appreciate okay. your passion. Thanks. Dylan Thompson, followed by Claudia Ramirez. Uh, good evening. Um, I'm here tonight to speak on behalf of the Orange County May Day Coalition. Uh, first, uh, I want to thank Councilmember Martinez for directing the city manager Cavazos to meet with us. Um, we, we sent out our, uh, we reached out and we're just waiting for a response now. But I'd also like to thank the city manager for including the meeting in the next steps for uh, the Santa Ana jail briefing that came out. Um, we're eager to meet with you guys and the chief of police to discuss uh, the profitability report, uh, potential cancellation of the ICE contract and non-compliance with ICE detainers. Uh, first, about the jail rep profitability report, it, it's just really important for us in the public to have that, just get an understanding of uh, how the jail works and uh, our public policy and setting up that context. Secondly, um, regarding the cancellation of the ICE contract, we understand that um, canceling the ICE contract with our jail is a very complicated and difficult issue, but we, we believe that our elected representatives and their staff have the creativity and leadership to come up with a plan for the future that matches their values and the values of the residents of the city. I actually believe if the jail and its failed business plan didn't pose such a financial threat to the city, we wouldn't have to have it. So, and I think it matches your values too, based on uh, the votes you did for that resolution calling for an expansion to deferred action. Uh, third, I want to talk about non-compliance with ICE detainers. Um, I understand that we have a trust act in California now. However, it turns out that honoring any ICE detainers could expose the city to a risk of a costly litigation. Uh, recently, a federal judge ruled in Miranda Olivares versus Clackamas County case in Oregon that the county owed damages to a person held on an ICE detainer due to constitutional rights violations. Since then, many counties around the country, including our neighbors in Riverside and San Bernardino, have uh, suspended their uh, compliance with ICE detainers to protect uh, their uh, citizens' constitutional rights and to avoid this fi uh, serious uh, financial risk. Uh, finally, uh, I just want to encourage any of you that believe that in the long term ending the ICE contract is a, is a right thing to do to come out and uh, let us know. We understand that the jail needs to be financially stable and we understand that it's not going to happen overnight. It's a rough situation now, but can it be a goal for the future? Does the vision of the city you love really include uh, an ICE contract? And one other thing, I, I think you guys should get paid compensated fairly for your work. It's a serious job. This is a big city, and you guys should get compensated. Thanks. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, Claudia Ramirez, followed by Scott Sink, followed by Octavio Pina, please. Good evening, city, um, evening council and city manager. My name is Claudia Ramirez. I'm a representative of Orange County May Day Coalition. In a recent Voice of OC interview, Police Chief Rojas was asked if he felt the ICE contract was incongruous for a city that was so heavily immigrant. His answer, folks that talk about morality in a contract, to me, that's kind of a gray. I'm not sure where they're coming from or what they mean about a contract not being mor morally correct. What I see is a lot of people that don't have a good understanding of what the contract is. At the end of the day, we're leasing bed space to immigrants and custom enforcement. If we weren't leasing the space to them, somebody else would be leasing the space to them. Firstly, we know that the laws, that laws and contracts can be unjust and immoral. Human history is riddled with them. We, we think it is immoral to separate parents with no ser serious criminal record 
from their children. So our ICE contract is a moral issue because we become complacent in the process of separating families. The excuse that if we don't do it, someone else will, is moral fallacy and a disturbing justification of complacency with a broken immigration system. Secondly, we do have a good understanding of the contract. However, if you believe we do not, it would be helpful if you ex expedited setting up a meeting with us so any perceived misunderstandings can be addressed. We want everyone to have accurate information about the jail and our ICE, ICE contract. I'm sure that Chief Rojas and Mr. Cavazos are frustrated that the community continues to ask them about the contract. So I would like to redirect this question because they, in fact, are not the ones to be questioned about morality and solutions. I recognize that rather that it is the job of you, our representatives, to be the voice of the people. You have an opportunity to do the right thing, the moral thing, and opt out of secure communities by not honoring ICE detainers. It won't change anything with the bad finances of the jail at this point, but I hope that even as a gesture, you would consider it a moral and the just thing to do. Thank you, Scott, followed by Octavio, followed by Thomas Gordon. Good evening, members of the council and city manager Cavazos. Um, this is just a friendly reminder, Mr. Cavazos, to check your email regularly. Um, if you remember, you were directed by Councilwoman Martinez to meet with the Orange County May Day Coalition during the May 6th council meeting. Um, we've been trying to get a hold of you, but you're not returning our phone calls. I'm not sure what's going on, but we look forward to hearing from you soon. And speaking of overdue tasks, again, we're still waiting for the jail profitability report. It's over a year overdue. Uh, Councilman Tinajero, would you accept a homework assignment from one of your students that was over a year late? Uh, members of the council, uh, you told us that the failure to produce this report was the reason why the city council couldn't cancel its contract with ICE and thus uh, had to continue to participate in the deportations and the separation of families. Uh, meanwhile, memos obtained by the OC Weekly suggest that you are not trying to stop collaborating with ICE, but rather uh, further entrench the city in the deportation business by seeking a higher per diem rate, much like you have planned for the federal marshal detainees, which is on tonight's agenda. Councilwoman Martinez, you also indicated during the May 6th council meeting that a recent OC Weekly article was, quote, misleading precisely for making this same claim. As far as I can tell, you are in the deportation business and the only action taken to change this practice so far has been to make it more profitable. So uh, please, Councilwoman Martinez or anyone um, in the city or staff, if you can clarify this matter for us, please clarify if our allegations are in any way inaccurate or incorrect. Uh, this is your contract. Here it is. It says, this agreement shall become, this agreement shall remain in effect indefinitely unless terminated in writing by either party, by either party, by either party. That's uh, you, 120 days in advance of the effective date of formal termination. And again, please cancel the contract as soon as possible. Stop the deportations. We want families without borders. Thank you. Thank you, Octavio, followed by Thomas Gordon. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, City Council members, City Manager, staff, I'm here as the Vice President of the South Santa Ana Merchants Association. Uh, first, we want to thank you once again for including the uh, South Main Corridor on the five-year plan, and that opens the door to the 20-year plan. We want you to know that we are ready to work with you to make an impact on the South Main Corridor. The South Main Corridor is more than just a Main Street. It's a neighborhood hub with a lot of issues that we are ready to work along with you to solve. Secondly, sustainability. We want to call your attention and try to work on a way to make Main Street, the South Main Corridor, the maintenance and the improvement of South Main Corridor a sustainable project. We don't think it's 
smart or efficient to be here once every 10 years to try to bring back up the South Main Corridor. We need to find a way to make it good every year with a maintenance plan, with an improvement plan. And third, synchronization. We really want to be in sync with downtown Santa Ana. We want to be part of your marketing plan. We support downtown Santa Ana. We support all the efforts that you are making in downtown Santa Ana. We need to be in sync with downtown Santa Ana to be part of all the progress and all the good things that are coming to town. So thank you very much. Thank you, Octavio. And the final speaker, Thomas Gordon. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, and Council Members. I'm here to speak in opposition to um, 65A on your agenda, increasing council compensation. Um, basically, uh, you guys knew what you were in for when you ran. It's a $15,000 a year job. It's a part-time job. We have staff that we compensate to do basically the, the heavy lifting. And you guys are, are actually listing on here that you have evaluated similar cities, 65,000 to 130,000, 60,000 to 115,000. Some of the cities you're comparing, Fresno, Sacramento, Anaheim, Riverside. You know what they have that we don't have? A bookmobile. We could get a bookmobile with the money that you guys are gonna use for your own compensation and actually invest in our community We've had children gunned down on the streets of Santa Ana recently. All these cities that you guys are comparing also have bookmobiles. So let's compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges. I don't think that the time to be asking the voters for a $9 million tax increase on the November ballot, we're going to businesses and we're gonna tax them $9 million based on staff's recommendation that businesses be taxed $9 million in utility user taxes. And then you're asking for increased compensation while not providing a bookmobile so kids can actually provide access to a bookmobile so kids can learn to read and have a future and provide tax base to this city. Thank you very much. Thank you, that was our last speaker. So now I'm gonna bring our attention back to the uh, council agenda and Madam Clerk, uh, we're now gonna go to the consent calendar. Are there any items on the consent calendar that uh, Anybody wishes to pull? Councilor Martinez, yes, please. Yes, Mayor, could I pull 20A? 20A is in Anthony. Uh, um, yes, and also 25G. 25G is in George. And that's it for the consent calendar. Any other items? I would entertain a motion on the ballot. So motion approved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Aye, those opposed, motion carries 25A. Councilor Martinez. Yes, if I could just have staff just approach us here. I see that we're doing some appropriation adjustments in regards to some of our uh, existing contracts as it pertains to our street um, projects. And just wanting to know, because the amounts are over, you know, a uh, million dollars, and wanting to know why we're making these appropriations, if you just could please tell the public. Um, I know we've, we, um, we've been using American Asphalt and All-American uh, for quite some time, I know within the past five plus years, and we're now, you know, the total estimated contract is um, over $7 million, but we're increasing uh, both a uh, million dollars for each of those companies. So if you can just please provide me some more detail. Yes, uh, good evening, uh, Mayor and members of the City Council. Um, if you recall, back in uh, 2007, there was a $68 million bond that was approved by the city to improve uh, local streets. And uh, the work was done over several years in, in um, uh, numerous phases. And every time a phase was done uh, uh, because the economy was suffering, we had uh, great uh, bids, great unit pricing, and we would have uh, funding left over. Uh, back uh, a little over a year ago, the uh, finance uh, uh, department informed Public Works that we still had uh, approximately $4 million worth of uh, bonds that were unspent that we that we needed to spend this fiscal year so we programmed that funding to be uh, expended but there was still remaining around uh, 800 it's about eight hundred and twenty five thousand dollars 
that was un, um, yeah it's eight hundred and twenty four thousand dollars unexpended and we also had accumulated um, uh, interest in that bond uh, the unspent uh, bond money so uh, we packaged together a million dollar cost extra to continue improving local streets, which was the original intent of the bonds. Certainly so, Mr. Galvez, but at, at one moment in time where you were going to come to the council and tell us what streets with this new money we were going to spend that. And, and this is why I pull this item. Again, you know, mm -hmm. uh, certainly you have the power, you know, and, and the authority based on our code on, on, on our streets. I, 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 I get that. Um, the power is vested um, within our public works director. But when we're looking at this kind of money, and yes, money has been it, 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 there's extra money and it's a great thing that we're going to go out and fix our streets but you know we all know that you know there are various priority areas and this is another discussion that we haven't had we understand that at the end of the day you know infrastructure is very important to us and we want to make sure that we're a part of that as, as we move forward and so I would like to um, you know I'm going to go ahead and move forward with this because this is money that will be well spent but I want a list of the streets that will be fixed with that, and I want to make sure that th th that it's equitable. That it's that, that these streets, some of these streets are being fixed in areas that need to be fixed. Um, um, and and I'm hoping that we have a timeline with those as well, and how that money will be spent. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Vince Armiento. Please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I believe that was a motion, so I'll second with comment. Um, and my comments brief. I don't know um, what proportion of those almost 300 miles of streets that we had. Um, uh, resurfaced and and done just a few years back but what I've heard since then is that some of those streets have failed mm -hmm. and so the construction has been flawed there's been some defects in, in the in the um, emulsification process and I think you know what we'd what I'd like to do is make sure your staff as they work with all American and I'm not saying they're the ones who uh, did the the defective streets but a lot of money was spent a lot of thought was put into this these were processes I think that we that were supposed to be not only effective efficient but green as well but they should last more than a few years so if you and your staff can make sure that if we're receiving complaints from residents whose streets are failing and they were the product of work that was performed by all American please you know maybe you can advise them that if there's a warranty of some kind for them to make good on the past um, defects that they've caused if, if, if in fact it's them and again I if you can go ahead and just check that and with that Mr. Morrell second the motion any other comment? Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Uh, Council Martinez, your second item. Yes, thank you, Mayor. 25G, and just really quickly, Mr. City Manager, just wanted to bring this to our attention um, because it's taken years to get this done, and what this is is really the installation of credit card to enable our parking meters within our downtown with the, with the sensors. I just want to thank you for your leadership. You know, we've, uh, we asked for a study four or five years ago on this. We actually had a pilot program out there. Nothing ever happened and until you came and you realize as you walk our downtown the kind of amount of money that we are losing every single day. We're not effective. We're not efficient. And by putting this kind of system in into our downtown, we're going to recuperate a lot of money. And I just want to thank you uh, for your leadership in moving us in this direction. If you just could just highlight very quickly what is it exactly that we're doing and how much money do you believe we will recoup with um, implementing this new system. Thank you, uh, Councilwoman Martinez, uh, Mayor Polito, members of the City Council. Uh, yes, uh, we are coming into the modern age. Uh, these uh, smart meters will take credit cards uh, and they will also allow us to adjust rates as needed based on demand. And, in, and in, more importantly than anything, uh, people will uh, a lot more time. There will be many features like uh, being able to pay by telephone. Uh, of course, use a credit card. And then also, these are smart meters in that when somebody leaves, uh, they go back to zero. Uh, nothing pains me more than walking around downtown every day, people circling, trying to get a free space. And I believe uh, that the revenue uh, will be significant, as we uh, outlined. I would tell you, though, where this has done, uh, been done before, the description was revenue skyrocketed. So I think this is great for, for Santa Ana. It's uh, good uh, for the city, and the revenue will be very uh, well spent uh, going forward. Thank you. I move the item, Mayor. Okay, we have a motion to second. Uh, just another uh, question on that. Will it not also save us money on the enforcement side because it's easier to communicate with these meters? Great question, uh, Mayor Polito, members of the City Council. 
uh, in theory, as we go forward, people will actually be notified that their meter is going to expire. But in addition to that, the plan is to alert the meter uh, attendants so that instead of having a circle, they can go directly to where the meter is expired. So yes, it will save so time. So less people will be able to do the job that right now is done by more. Yes. Thank you. So with that, those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. I believe that's it for the consent calendar. I will entertain a motion on item uh, 55A. So moved. Second. This is just a uh, job classification uh, for an active transportation coordinator. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 aye those opposed, motion carries. I believe, Madam Clerk, we're now on, is it item 65A? And who would like to take this on first? Uh, uh, Councilmember, I, I believe it was my motion that um, continued this matter from yes, the last. Yes, go week. ahead. You want to start, gonna, and then I'll come to I'm others. I'm going to open it up to the entire council. Obviously, I just wanted to go ahead and thank the staff for um, bringing this back to us, and, and my colleagues for looking at this. As you know, this was brought to us two weeks ago at the May sixth meeting, and. Um, what I was trying to do with, with the motion, and this is obviously dealing with the strategic plan and allocation of the funds, not really a, uh, uh, deciding or determining what the priorities were. They're, those were already determined. Um, my intent was to look and deliberate about uh, at, at how the allocation of the funding was done. Um, I wanted to thank staff, and I did that uh, at the last meeting, because it's a very difficult process to try to quantify what the community response was and what the priorities were, not just to identify the priorities, but to identify how do you allocate now proportionately based upon the responses that were received. And again, we all knew this was a gargantuan staff, uh, or excuse me, a gargantuan effort by our staff to undertake because to try to quantify what 350,000 residents would like to see in a plan and what their priorities are is a very difficult and imperfect process. I did think that there was going to be a moment for this body to decide how, um, how well spent money should be, um, uh, should be allocated. And to me, um, what was missing in this whole process was this, uh, was this body's opportunity to use some discretion on allocation. I think the participation from the public was, was strong. I think it wasn't ideal. We have um, about 2,100 residents that um, participated through our nine community uh, meetings. Um, and I think there was a survey that was done as well. But I think that it was um, not as aggressive and robust a response as I would have liked. Uh, so that being said, I think what staff presented to us was a very, very good start. But I think it's going to be up to those of us who um, are vested with this decision making to try to make sure that we present a balanced and fair plan that not only addresses the needs that were identified, but addresses them equally and fairly and in a balanced manner. I think all of us could make an argument for any one of these priorities, whether it be um, uh, public safety, whether it be economic development, whether it be the arts, whether it be uh, youth programming, infrastructure, uh, wellness, any one of those things are very valuable. The problem is, is that we have a finite amount of funding. So um, what concerns me is that we, uh, that we do this in a way that's going to be done intelligently, thoughtfully, and reflective of not only the values that we've heard from our community, but also the values that we have to represent those people that didn't go to those community meetings, that didn't respond online, because they're busy trying to raise a family, trying to work, trying to get through their daily lives, and does that mean we ignore them because they didn't participate in the survey or they didn't attend the meetings? Are we going to do this to their, to their detriment? So I think we all have a role to play in this, and I want to thank the city manager for allowing us to maybe make this pie a little larger or the amount of funds that we have to allocate because it may address some of our differences and it may resolve that. The problem is, is now we also have to ask ourselves a second question as policymakers up here. Do we want to increase this amount uh, knowing that we have also a responsibility to be fiscally frugal? Is that something that we want to do? And if that's the case, then I'm happy to take that, that challenge on. 
and to and make decisions and respect the will of the super majority of this council because it's not a simple majority that it's gonna, that that's going to that it's going to take to pass this appropriation. It's going to take um, a super majority of this council. So it's important. I think it's valuable. It's a good exercise. It's what I think we have to do. But I think what it does is it now opens up the opportunity for all of us to be able to comment, to pine, and to reflect on what we think is important and valuable to all our residents, not simply the ones who come to speak at the meetings. Because as, as much as I value your comments when you come to this podium, I value the comments and I value the thoughts of those people who can't come to this podium. And I think that's who we are supposed to also represent up here. So in any event, I, uh, Mr. Mayor, want to open it up to my colleagues so we can comment because I believe my uh, colleague and I uh, drafted an adjustment to what was the previous and original allocation uh, that was made. I think it was $2.2 million, somewhere in that neighborhood. Now that we may be dealing with a larger amount of money, if this council decides to grow that amount, then it's a different discussion, and I'm happy to have that one as well. All right. Who wants to speak uh, next? Councilman Mesqua. Well, I just wanted to thank our city manager and all of the staff involved in all of the forums and collecting the data. And I know, like Councilmember Sarmiento just said, it was a tremendous effort um, to get this plan in front of us that we're hope we're going to pass tonight. Um, I know I have priorities. Councilmember, everyone has a certain priority, and I think staff really made the best effort to give us the information we needed in order to move forward. And my question is, if we move forward with the way we have it presented to us tonight and we're going to have that additional money, is it going to impact how – it won't cause a, a – I mean, I know we're trying to be frugal and save money. Um, how is it going to impact? Thank you, uh, Councilman Mesquiel, uh, Mayor Polito, members of the City Council. Uh, we have uh, really uh, – stuck to this line all along. We allocated uh, $2 million, uh, and that's already in the forecast for five right. years. We have a, a surplus uh, identified uh, for the next five years. And uh, we always said all along and all the correspondents that if we got new revenue, and we did, the council has approved a new revenue of about $1.5 million uh, for the uh, federal uh, funding that uh, we would invest in additional items in the strategic plan and what I'm recommending today based on the input I have received that half of the new revenue uh, be allocated to invest in Santa Ana in the programs that I've identified as attachment B. So uh, we are actually uh, getting twice as much money as we're investing and recommending today. That additional money will be uh, part of the reserve for an early uh, re uh, satisfaction of the of the reserve, but I'm very confident that anything that you uh, prove today within uh, what's recommended will have an actual positive outcome because we're investing in Santa Ana. Thank you, Councilor Reyna. Please. Yes, uh, try to keep it brief. You know, um, this is an actually an amazing historical moment in, in our history in the Santa for Santa Ana. We haven't had a strategic plan in so many years. And the fact that this body has come together and has dedicated over two years to put this together uh, is absolutely amazing. It's, it, it's time for applause on our end, on staff's end, on the community's end. Uh, is, there, is the system perfect? Unfortunately not. And there's, no perfect, there's no perfect system. I advocated for additional outreach to all the neighborhood, to all the wards, to get everybody to be having involved. Uh, but we were able to do additional outreach. We were funding at certain levels and we were able to have a little additional funding and so we're able to bring in and continue to fund the, the, the priorities that we have. I, I love the fact where we're at. We could always do better, uh, but I will be moving this, this uh, agenda item forward. I will be supporting it and uh, I look for better days for Santa Ana to come. So thank you very much. Thank you. Councilman Benavides, please. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, no, it is. I'll echo some of what, uh, briefly, what some of my uh, colleagues have mentioned. One is it, it has been a, a, a collective effort. Uh, I, I think we, we can all be very proud of, of the work, of the fact that there is a strategic plan. Numerous members of the public came and spoke to that effect as well, asking us to support it, asking us to move it forward. At this point, it's somewhat in limbo uh, out there, uh, waiting for us to be able to um, you know, give the confidence to the community that we are going to adopt the plan, that we are going to attach funding behind it, that within the next few weeks we're going to be ready to implement. Uh, is it a perfect plan? Uh, it's not. Most things are never actually reach perfection. That's why we continue to improve them. 
Uh, this is actually the first go around. So even though there are certain things in the uh, in the the uh, 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 the allocations that that I would have preferred to to uh, maybe move around at this point, I think it's in the best interest of the community um, and, and for the city to to actually go ahead with this first year with what's there. Several of the uh, three of those items are asterisked, uh, which demonstrate that that even though we don't have a clear uh, a plan for uh, for those allo key allocations. They will be go uh, be going back to review and, and be uh, coming back before we actually designate those that, that funding. So that gives me peace of mind that we'll be able to have uh, an actual plan uh, in place um, uh, that, that that's going to be prudent, that's going to be effective. So uh, given that, I'm going to go ahead and second uh, the item uh, as as uh, Councilman uh, Reina uh, uh, moved and uh, support it. And hopefully we'll go ahead, go ahead and get this done this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem, Tina Hero, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I, I want to just let the community know there's, there's different ways to create a strategic plan. One could have been that the council just told the city manager, we're not going to go out to the community. We have our, our, our priorities, and we're going to sit in a room with you and tell us what our priorities are. And based on the priorities that we give you, that's the decision that's going to be made. But we didn't do that. Uh, we did something different, is we went out to the community and we said, what's important to you? And I heard a speaker come up here earlier and was, was talking about the arts and you're cutting the arts. You, I, no, we're not cutting anything. If anything, for the first time, we're giving money to the arts. But what we did was we went out to the community to find out what were the, what were the priorities. Overwhelmingly, the priorities were after school programs and, and bringing those back. Am I wrong? And one of the things that I want to tell you is that we have a process. And when we follow the process, uh, good things happen. Now, we just had, we, even though our, our, our police department's doing a great, job, a great job of gang suppression, we had a couple of incidents that were tragedies this week. And, and an, an, in, an individual asked me, what are you going to do about that? I said, well, we have a strategic plan that the community said, you know what, we're going to be forward thinking and get our kids involved in other things and assure that there's avenues for them to participate. And so we have after school programs that are coming back. We're giving art money to the arts for the first time and then some. It's because we followed a procedure, quite frankly, that you dictated. And I hear people say that it's not perfect. You know, I tell people this all the time. I tell my students this all the time when I talk to people. I always compare things to a fruit. When a fruit is completely ripe, it begins to rot. You always want to be a little bit green. And that's what the strategic plan is. It's a piece of fruit that's a little bit green, but at least for the first time we're able to take a bite out of it, of something tangible, something that we can take a look at, something that we can smell and touch and feel. And, and that wasn't the case. This is historic. So I applaud the council. I applaud our staff. It took a couple of lumps, little elbows in the eyes, and you know, body, a couple body slams to get here. But we're here, and this is the first step in many steps in improving. The beauty is we have something in place now. Next year, it's about improving. So I'm going to support this plan. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Martinez, please. Thank you, Mayor. I want to give a couple examples because, you know, I, I really read the plan the fi and, and the financial plan, and the reason why a lot of those asterisks are there is because I sat down with the city manager and asked some really tough questions about accountability. And the reality is that no one asked, and, and this was very important to the community, was the volunteer and internship program, $200,000 allocated, but no one asked how those $200,000 were going to be allocated. Was that 200,000, was, was it going to go entirely to the actual volunteer and internship program? When I asked their city managers, I'm like, no, I'm going to hire somebody, use $100,000 for that. So only $100,000. So then that's misleading to the community. I said to Mr. City Manager, the community asked to have a really well-rounded program. So the $200,000 should be invested within the internship and, 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 and the um, volunteer program. We agreed. He's like, this is what we're going to do. We're going to have our liaisons on the eighth floor who are rock stars going to help us out with that. 
The second p the example I wanted to make when there were some changes within the strategies that uh, um, myself and Councilman Sarmiento made, it wasn't because we wanted to take from another. We wanted to make sure that it was equitable, equitable and balanced and that we hit every goal. And I want to give another example about the arts and culture. When you look at $175,000 for this plan, I'm going to tell you that $175,000 can be used much better. Second go around, when we, when we decide the next two years for funding, when this commission gets together, realizes how they want to put this plan together, have an implementation, then we can invest money. That's the most logical thing to do. But when you're asking to spend $175,000 for a plan, I think that's way overreaching. I think we have a lot of intelligent people that are part of this commission. They're going to be able to put this plan together. There's other best practices that we're going to be able to, it's not going to cost $175,000 to do this plan. And so that's where I was looking at. It's like, okay, well, second time we'll go, uh, go around when we, we're going to invest more money, we can then use the money for implementation. Those are the questions that I was asking our staff to making sure that it's equitable, that it's sustainable. We made a commitment for the next five years, two million every five years, and Mr. City Manager is correct that we were, any extra money that was going to come, we, that we were going to be able to allocate it to the strategic plan. But what's really important that we need to really figure out and understand that there's a difference between ongoing costs and one-time costs. And so a lot of these items here are ongoing. They're going to be institutionalized. They're going, they need to be sustainable. And so how are we going to meet the needs of the other priorities that are, that are left? And those are the questions that I asked. And this is where I saw where this plan was a little flawed, this financial plan, because we're going to be put in a very awkward position in the next coming years because the majority of this funding is ongoing. And so all the other priorities that we want to meet, we're probably not going to be able to meet them because we're, we're not going to tell you that you know we're supporting this, but then the following two years we can't support this. That's the wrong thing to do. And so I want us to be critical. We must be critical. We have to have a deliberate process. We have every right. You know, we have the authority to make these appropriations adjustments, and we need to do it in a very intelligent way. We need to observe the information and make good critical decisions as we move forward, because if we don't look at this holistically, we're going to find ourselves in the same situation that we are here today. And, and look, I'm, I'm supportive. There are a lot of things, for example, health and wellness. We all know that that was one of my top priorities. That was $800,000. It went all the way to $400,000. Why? Because I wanted to make sure that all the goals were covered, that it was equitable, that it's sustainable as we move forward. And so I just want to, to, to let my colleagues know that as we move forward with any funding appropriations or allocations, that we need to ask these kinds of questions to our, our city manager. Because what we don't want to do is approve something and then come back and say, well, this is what we really meant, but we didn't ask the questions. It's our job to hold our staff accountable and to ask the right kind of questions to make sure that our community is getting what they ask for. And they're the ones that are counting on us to ask these kinds of questions. And so I'm glad that the city manager listened and that we're here. We have additional money, but Mr. City Manager, what I want to alert you is that we made a commitment to $10 million dollars for the next five years. I, 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 the next time around more money comes available, we need to be very clear that that, one, that new money that's coming in, it's either going to be to sustain the, the, the ongoing programs or we're going to commit to one-time program with the extra money that comes in. We really need to, to, to be very careful with that because the next two years we have to fund, you know, when the Arts and Culture Commission do this master plan, they're going to have an implementation phase, stuff that they want to fund. But if we don't have the money because we need to fund everything else that, we just, that we're just approving, we're not going to be able to, at the end of the day, to really help them out and making sure that they're successful and that we're really reaching out and doing our best job 
to move forward with arts and culture. And so the, and these are the examples that I want to give because it's important that the community understand that I'm not just up here picking and choosing because this is what Michelle Martinez wants to do. No, because I actually read the material. I asked the hard questions and, and it, it's my responsibility and my job. And, you know, I'm glad that we're allocating to hire more code enforcement officers. The community asked for that, and that wasn't in the first go around of the plan. We expect a good quality of life. We're not gonna have a good quality of life if we don't have the appropriate staff to do its job. When we talk about law enforcement, yes, they take the majority of the funds, but the reality is that there's a huge culture change that needs to occur within that police department. We need to make sure that they're effective and efficient, and there are things that need to be done that we need to spend money to make that happen as we move forward. And so I just want all of us to know that yes, this is a historical moment, that there's gonna be a lot more growing pains, but we have every right to deliberate what we're doing here in public because that's our job. We shouldn't be doing anything behind closed doors. It should be out here in the public, working with one another to make sure that we can do something right for the community. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any additional comment, Councilor Vince Sarmiento? Well, I have the floor. Let me just say that um, we have worked on this very hard for a long time. Um, I have some reservations as to, you know, the magnitude of, of the money. And, and as Councilman Martinez says, will we be able to maintain this or not? And if we can't, um, I think we're going to have to come back to the community next year and say, look, we spent more the first year than we thought we were. And I know we've got some other issues. We talked to them earlier today. There's some unknowns as to the budget in the future. So I just want to tell folks that are out there that, you know, we may or may not be able to keep this, this level of, uh, of funding. I know that's part of what uh, Councilor Martinez is saying. And it's one thing to do, you know, $2 million per year for five years and get to 10. It's another to come at a stronger level, which is what we're, you know, proposing right now. And I know we are taking some monies right now. For example, there's money here that's coming, you know, from the jail operations that conceivably could stay within the police department. And I'm sure they would find many ways that they could use that money. So I just think we should, whatever we do, we should be doing it here with our eyes open. So with that, uh, are there different uh, or additional comments? Well, Councilmember um, Vince Armiento. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I um I think that there was, there was a, a very valiant effort, and I want to hear from staff, but one of the questions I have is that how were these figures arrived at in the first place? So let me just kind of backtrack because I know I had conversations with, um, um, and it's not a simple question, I know, because before you came, Mr. City Manager, we started this process, as was said, uh, months and maybe a year before that, but it went through many hands. So trying to quantify what the responses were was a difficult task. but. I'll just speak in generalities, I think, a little bit more, that I'm not a big fan of plans that fund other plans because I think that our monies are too valuable. In other words, um, I see here, you know, there's a, there's a carve out for a summit um, to produce a plan. Uh, you know, look, to me, I see a lot of plans in my office and they're just sitting there collecting dust. What I'd much rather see is those, are those monies going towards something tangible that's helping our kids, whether it's uh, a, an internship, whether it's a program after school for sports, or whether it's a library and having a, an iPad in, in his or her hand. That's what I think the money should be spent for. So um, I, I, I see that um, there, was some, there was a comment, and, and, and I always respect my colleague to my left because he's almost always right. Um, but when the, when the response is, you know, what was the overwhelming response for the community after school programs? That's not exactly the case because I think that a lot of people think that the priority in our community is community safety. And that doesn't mean just police. That means code enforcement. That means fire. That means all different levels. And if you look at polling that's been done in our city uh, recently to years back, that's been the number one thing that's polled. Hi. There's a reason why. I know it's not sexy. I'm not saying that, you know, it's something that we should always consider funding to its maximum. But it's because we're a community that's very large and is very complex and, ha and we have a lot of issues. And, and I think, as was mentioned this weekend, we experienced a very, very tough weekend. Um, so we don't want to ignore those things because it's important. 
I think it's important to fund youth programs, absolutely. I think the sports programs are important. To me, academic after-school programs are important. Not every youth is an athlete. Not everybody wants to play soccer or football or basketball. Maybe there's a kid that wants to go read. What are we going to do with that kid if we don't have any uh, resource or anything for them? We, as a city, have one library with one small satellite library over on New Hope. That is ridiculous for a city our size. That's, that's shameful. And so, to me, I'm very happy that the city manager was able to find additional funds for what's called an E or Internet library because it's a much smarter way of being able to provide information and research in, uh, uh, tools to, to, to young people. And so, that's important to me. Again, uh, to, I just don't like to see a lot of plans being funded with monies that, that are coming from a plan because I just see that that's just paperwork and administrative work being done, and I, don't, I just don't see a lot of good in that. But I'm willing to go ahead and support this um, so long as we have some discussion about after-school programs, including soccer, including tennis, because they were, they were excluded. And I like the fact that South Maine has been included in the additional funding uh, allocation. Uh, that's something that I'm very supportive of. As you know, the downtown isn't the only uh, commercial center or area or district in the city. Um, you know, we, we can create others. We have Harbor, we have South Coast Metro, but we should also think about South Maine. And I've heard ad nauseum people coming before us at this podium saying, when are you going to help us? So I also want us to be you know, cognizant of that. Finally, infrastructure is something that is not very sexy. Nobody says, hey, let's fix our pipes that are about to burst and are about 100 years old. Or nobody says, hey, let's fix our sidewalks because they're buckling. I mean, who's, that's not a sexy thing. I know it's, it's sexy to talk about the arts. It's sexy to talk about after-school things and everything. But when your pipes burst, when, you're, when you can't get hot water, what are you going to say then? How good is a master plan going to help you then? I just want you all to think about that because that's what we're deciding here today. So let's be honest and let's be um, you know, sober with ourselves and say, you know, look, this is what we're doing. And if we choose to go down this path, let's, be, let's not complain too much when you know, your, your pavement is failing or your streets are failing. You know, we'll say we had this moment in time when nobody spoke up for those things. So, uh, Mr. Mayor, with those caveats, I'll, I'm, I'm happy to go ahead and support with those, uh, with those changes. Okay. Any, any other comment? Um, what I would like to add is that I, I will also support it, but I do want input as to this process because between right now and how the money actually gets spent, I just see still a big gap. And so whether it's going to committees or whether it's a city manager coming back to council members, as we did in this process, uh, I think we need to continue to have a process. Otherwise, we can be very, very surprised. And the other thing I would add is, look, there's you know, streets in our city right now that are still not paved. I mean, we talked earlier about the ones that are failing that shouldn't be. Well, those are the ones that got fixed. We can all drive around town, and there's you know streets that we still haven't fixed. So I think we need to be careful not to feel too good and say, "Hey, you know, we've got this money, and and everything's uh, uh, you know does need attention because it still does need attention." Real, Councilmember Amesqua. Thank you, Mayor. Just really quick, I really do like what uh, Councilmember Sarmiento said with respect to a plan for a plan, um, and I was thinking if we could make a quick amendment on that one, just the, it's the 50000 we're talking about, right? Um, he mentioned uh, academics, and I think, you know, in our plan we don't really see specifically anything going towards academics, so is it possible to allocate that towards, I mean, if we vote on it, of course, um, towards academics and then um, put this plan maybe as more funds become available? then we go ahead and fund that? The answer is yes. I'm supportive of that. Yeah. So, so we need an amendment from the maker of the motion in the second. So, so can you make an amendment? amendment the, is, to, is to allocate the 50000 for academics. Okay. I'll second. Well, well, we've well we, got already a, we already had a motion. We already had a second. second. For the supplement, the, with the 
Yeah, he seconded. Is this specific? Yeah. Do you have a, I mean, it's, it's kind of broad. Is there a specific? It's a comprehensive, comprehensive community. Yeah. But what do you want to spend it on? On academics. Um, I know we've been approached by different organizations. Uh, one example was uh, uh, SAT scores. Our, our, many of our students have the GPAs to get into competitive universities, but they are not making those SAT scores. Um, this is something we can look at. I mean, it'll come up for different, you know, we, there's nothing specific that we can allocate it to, but just hold it, you know, programs like this that might benefit our, our students. You know, as a, as a the, the, the maker of the motion, as a maker of the motion, it sounds like you want to uh, reallocate 1A, 50,000 to uh, educational components. Would you be willing to send that over to the library that would be focusing on educational components? That's, yeah, we can, I mean, we can all have a discussion. That's fine. All right, so you, you accept, accept that amendment accept that. and the second, you made the second, I believe, Councilman. I, I, I did, and, and frankly, you know, I, I, I'm very frustrated right now. Uh, the process was not ideal. Uh, the process itself actually wasn't this allocation of funds process. It's very difficult. It's, it's a very difficult task that we've charged uh, a city manager with. Uh, we, we initially indicated there was going to be two, I have to include, in, insert uh, some levity two, in this. Two million uh, dollars that were. Uh, Council member. I just saw, you know what they say? Legislating is worse than sausage making. So just like <laughs> what you were saying, I just wanted to include that in, in what you were saying. Like, yeah. You, you, you described it exactly correct. So it, 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 it is. Um, He's going to become vegetarian. <laughs> serious after this whole process and tonight. Um, initially, we started with $2 million. There was a, a recommendation to add a $200,000 for, for a youth sports scholarship program that is not, that is not very clear, and then an additional $8,000 for, for something else. So that brought us, bumped us up to 2.280. Uh, last meeting, there was some, some disaccord and differences of opinion. Uh, as to reallocating funds. City manager made a valiant effort to try to address what the needs uh, and, and priorities of the, the council by adding an additional $734,000. Uh, it's, it's, when, we, when we identify new funds as we have, uh, we, want to make, we should always make sure that we're strategic, that we actually think through the process. I expressed t before to some of my colleagues and, and, and to city manager that I, I wasn't completely comfortable with just adding some more, more funds. Um, uh, Mayor also kind of uh, addressed that in his comments just now. Um, I, I think in order to move forward, uh, I'm, I'm just comfortable with going with the motion on the floor, the original motion on the floor, because if we're going to start to move things around, uh, I, I think it can get very messy. I, I'm not comfortable with moving, moving the $50,000 from what was recommended right now. If we're going to do that, then I would recommend the, the scholarship youth sports program um, or, or some other uh, 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 effort that we're, we're not a foundation. We don't have money to, to start giving away. We're not a for-profit corporate uh, uh, organization that identifies funds and designates it to give it away. Uh, we have plenty of programs that need uh, support within the organization. So even though there are great programs out there, uh, SAT prep or anything else, uh, again, we have our own programs in, in, internally uh, that teen space, a number of others. We want to expand teen, teen space to other locations. Uh, anyhow, it, there's the idea of academics being important. It is academic. Uh, academics is important, but, but some of the same members of the council here are the ones who are designating monies for scholarships for youth sports or, or, or tennis programs or soccer programs. So there, there's, there seems to be a lot of conflicting comments uh, coming from even even Tiana Dias. So it's my, I, I'm not going to accept the, 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 the friendly the, the amendment. amendment. I, I think we should just go ahead and move forward with what we have. Let's make the best with that. Um, send it to whatever, wherever we need to, committee to be as effective as, and strategic as possible. In a year, we'll have an opportunity. Throughout this year, we'll, we'll have, be, have an opportunity to continue to massage, but we'll come back in a year. That, that's what I'm going to stick with. Um, hopefully, that's okay. Thank Mr. You. Mayor, just a point of Please, go ahead. In the event that the maker of, of the second because the maker of the motion accepted the friendly amendment. Can, can one of us second that, uh, that well, motion? We, with what we could do is vote on that and then just bring back another substitute motion with the amendment uh, as part of the motion. Be before we do that, I just want to put on the record and wanting to make sure that it is provided to us what we are going to be approving that's ongoing and then one time so that we understand as we move forward 
what money we have to deal with for future priorities um, within our strategies, because we have 47 that are still unfunded. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Yes, go ahead, Mayor Pro Tem. The, uh, with Council Member Amesqua, I, I, I do agree with your assessment that education, we should also take a look at education. And I'm, I, I was prepared to vote for that. Right. Uh, but I'm going to take I'm going to take a step back and I'm going to try to get some discipline on myself as well. And that is and that's not any uh, I'm not opposing what your thought process is. But I think there's something else that we're missing. There's going to be more money down the road to be able to do other things. So I, this isn't the end of this. I think we can still bring it up. But I have to agree with Council Member Benavides on this one is that we have gone through a, pro, a progress. A, a, a process and as as and and there's flaws in that process but I think that uh, we we can look unprofessional if we start to alt dice and slice up here we've gone through that and and you know at the end of the day the city manager has a very difficult job he has to look at the input and assess it show it to us and then create a budget for it and you know he has a track record of creating a strong budget I think it's something that we have to as a council give him an opportunity. He hasn't even been here one year. We've already have over $10 million in surpluses. So I think something that we have to also learn how to do is how to spend money. Because we've been learning, to, we've, been lear we've, been, we've been so used to cutting that the, the, the spending is, is also difficult too. So I'm going to go ahead and support the original motion and I think we could come back and, and uh, touch on the Councilor Romesco, please. I, I understand we're following a process and I think my educator Heart when I heard Councilmember Sarmiento say, you know, we don't have anything for academics. And, you know, it's part of our youth. Um, I think we can actually look at that. And I just want to make sure that the plan is passed so that we can move forward. So as soon as other funds become available, if we can, yeah. you know, take a second look at that, then I, I'm willing to move forward with it. And Councilmember Amesqua, you can't talk about this because they're your employer, but I can because they're not mine. But the school district is getting a tremendous amount of money that they're still not being very clear on where it's going. And so I encourage people out in the audience and in this community to go and push that group to start spending the money where it should be. And that's with the education of our children and advancing to a higher level of education. Additional comment? Councilor Martinez? Yeah, Mayor, I just want to state just what we're doing here today. We are approving 19 reoccurring um, strategies and five one-time strategies. So I just want to make that very clear to my colleagues. Dollar amount, do you have any I breakdown? Have a dollar amount, but, you know, the reoccurring are, are very big costs. But there's only the five one-time monies are no more than $200,000. And so I'm going to assume there's no more than 1.5 million of the one time of the five items. So just wanting you guys to understand that, that there's 19 reoccurring and five one time uh, uh, costs. Let's go. Let's go for the Mayor, uh, Mayor, please That's go a, ahead. A excellent point. I do want everybody to know that we do have every dollar amount listed that says one time and recurring. So I appreciate that uh, clarification. But the dollar right. amounts are listed. So I think we're ready to we're vote. Ready to vote. Uh, those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. So that let's go on to the next item. 65 uh, B is in boy. Uh, who is going to take that on? Councilor Benavides, uh, 65 B. Uh, yes, Mayor. But that's the. Um, Just want to move it? Uh, what would you like to do? Um, let me go ahead and make comment. I, I will be moving it with comment. Uh, the the um, back in 2007 2000 no 2005 2006 actually uh, I had an opportunity appointed by my predecessor actually at the time to sit on a citizens charter review task force committee and we spent uh, probably about five uh, months uh, coming together a couple of times a month in the evenings. Uh, there was 14 members, uh, residents of the city, that came together to review our charter. Our charter, our charter, basically is essentially our city's constitution. It's uh, it's what, what guides us. Uh, we went through and combed through um, the the, uh, the whole charter and uh, came up with a number of different recommendations. On, on it was initially back uh, uh, past several decades back in the mid mid uh, uh, mid century, actually last century, uh, and. So we, we went through a process of uh, making recommendations to the council at the time uh, to at any time that there's going to be any recommendations or change, changes to that document, uh, it, needs to be, it needs to go to the voters. Uh, some recommendations were, were picked up by the council at the time. 
they went to the voters in those past that the charter was, was amended. Uh, not all of those uh, recommendations were, uh, were taken up by council at that time for one reason or another. Um, here we had uh, some of those were, were left pending. Some of those items uh, and issues have come up uh, over the last number of years uh, by either staff have brought them up to council where there might be a room for, for cleanup and, and straightening things out that were kind of ambiguous or confusing. Uh, council has also uh, identified certain uh, certain items. So an ad hoc committee was put together by uh, by the mayor. Uh, by uh, three of us on the council uh, came together, sat with our staff, went through some of those original recommendations and some of those others uh, that have been brought up over the last couple of years. And at this point, what the ad hoc council committee uh, is recommending is to uh, ultimately uh, bring before, finalize some of the the uh, uh, these items. Uh, bring it back to, to council for final approval. Uh, and then ultimately, again, it's, it's going to be up to the voters uh, to go ahead and consider making some, recommend, making some, some, uh, some approvals and some amendments uh, to, to our charter. So today at tonight's meeting, it's just coming back uh, to the council. Uh, recommendations that the ad hoc committee is, is presenting for the full council to consider, uh, giving direction to our staff uh, to, to have some draft language uh, again, that'll come back then to council for final approval, and then again, it's up to the to, to, to the voters to, to decide on whether they're going to be open to to uh, making some changes to our charter. So, just wanted to give a little bit of feedback, a little bit of background, and for the most part, what is being picked up here uh, are items that. Uh, that is the there a motion to approve? Yes, sir. I'm uh, is there a, a motion. second? Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. So now we go to city manager comment, please. Thank you. Uh, well, okay. Timing is everything. Uh, thank you, Mayor, Member City Council. I don't know if uh, Robert Cortez is left. He's probably eating a sandwich because he's so relieved in the back there. But I want to thank him because he stepped in to help with this plan, did an amazing job. I want to thank all the staff that participated. There's Robert. Uh, and I just want to uh, thank you, Mayor, and Member City Council for your leadership. This is an amazing milestone and we're very excited to uh, overachieve on all the things that were mentioned to us, work very closely with the subcommittees and then come back with uh, good reports as we move along. So we're very grateful for that. The other thing I want to mention that's in our uh, strategic plan, but again, Mayor, uh, thank you and the members of the council, uh, but I know you've worked on this uh, a long time, but the streetcar project uh, is uh, well on its way in terms of the public outreach. Uh, on May 23rd, uh, we will provide notice to the community to begin the 45-day period. We have meetings scheduled in June, and by October, we hope to have all the approvals in place to get that project started. So I do want to mention that. Thank you. Thank you for that. Now let's go to Council Common. Councilman Romesqua, please. Uh, once again, just thank staff for all the work and effort that took into bringing this plan forward to us for approval. And uh, thank my colleagues, because I think we all want it to be this, the best process and you know we're this is the first time we do it and I'm very proud to serve with these council members um, one of the newer as one of the newer council members I think um, this has been a, a great experience for me and I'm looking forward to actually spending the money and seeing the fruits once we start spending um, very excited about um, the Arts Commission I think we are our city needs to be branded as a city that supports arts and it does bring economic development it brings people from other cities into our city and just very excited to, for what's coming thank you councilman reina please yes. um, it's getting close to that season uh, we got kids uh, children sorry. that are graduating and getting promoted uh, so congratulations sorry thank you appreciate it yeah. Uh, it's the season for graduations and promotions throughout the, the city and I'm sure throughout the nation and for all of our young uh, fifth graders and eighth graders that are being promoted to the next level, congratulations. For all of our high school students, I wish you all the best of luck in the next step of your life and your career. Uh, we also have a lot of college students that are, are now coming back and returning uh, uh, back to, the, to Santa Ana as well. And so I, I wish them all the best of luck and congratulations to all of them and to their families. Even though you're the one with the degree, uh, and your name's on there. Unfortunately, the degree but does not belong to you. It belongs to all the people that supported you, all the people that were advocates and championing uh, your, your education. So please uh, remember that as you go forward. 
this past week I had an opportunity to participate in the Higher Ed Center, the Higher Education Center in partnership with uh, Santa Ana College at our library, uh, giving our kids a, a pathway to higher education. Uh, we had uh, Congressman Loretta Sanchez that was there, uh, Jose Solorio and Larry Lebrado with the Santa Ana College, so uh, great partnership. I uh, want to thank uh, Gerardo and all the staff for doing a great job. Uh, looking for great things to continue to come out of the library. Uh, and like always, uh, shop in Santa Ana. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councilman Benavides, please. Oh, sports. Oh. So one last one. Go ahead. So I apologize. So uh, many of you know I work with young people, so I just got informed uh, of the development that's taking place downtown Santa Ana, and it's an eSports arena. It's actually going to be the first one in North America. Uh, and for the young people that are involved with gaming, this is absolutely huge. Uh, the potential for growth is, is, is tremendous. Uh, some of the students that I work with purchased um, a BlizzCon ticket, which is something similar to this. They sold 20,000 tickets for $200 in one hour. So the potential for this to grow in Santa Ana is absolutely huge. I'm looking forward to it. It's really exciting. Uh, and I encourage everybody to come on down. Uh, the grand opening should be this spring. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Benavides. Thank you, Mayor. Um, it's been a, a, a good night, a productive night here on the council. Sometimes, uh, you know, we, we don't always agree on things. and Sometimes we just need to agree, agree to disagree. And, and for the sake of um, focusing on having, making steps forward, of having progress, uh, as our uh, city manager oftentimes uh, mentions, things that may not be per perfect, but we are progressing, we're moving forward. And, uh, and I'm glad for that. I'm proud for uh, having approved the st strategic plan. There's a lot of good things happening in the city of Santa Ana. Um, I often say our best days are yet ahead, and I think tonight we see a, a glimpse of that, uh, a historic five-year strategic plan, dollars attached to that, supporting and actually uh, uh, I look forward to being able to say in, in, a, in, a, in a year and then in five years, uh, promises made, promises kept, as we, as we had an opportunity to do this afternoon. Uh, Councilwoman Martinez and myself uh, had an opportunity to be at the uh, Garfield Fitness uh, Park uh, opening uh, there on Brown uh, Street, across the street from... Uh, uh, from Garfield Elementary School. And I remember a couple of years ago uh, going through some uh, tough conversations and meetings, meeting after meeting of community forum after community forum with the residents of, of the neighborhood uh, there as we were looking at the, 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 the station district. And uh, there was a lot of uh, different uh, needs that were identified by the residents there. Uh, some of those were, were uh, sports uh, and, or, or, or uh, park types of space, activity centers, a community center, uh, quality, dignified, affordable housing, retail space, um, and, and the council at the time, we wrestled through things, and after over a year of, of planning, we, we made those commitments, and, and folks were, were uh, from the community and from some of the, the, uh, the uh, advocacy groups out there were very um, leery and kind of uh, didn't know whether they could trust uh, the city, city hall. And uh, it's exciting for, for us to be able to have been out there today. Again, prom we made promises. They weren't sure that they, could, that they could trust us, but they were out there celebrating with us as we did this ribbon cutting um, right across the street from a multi-million dollar community center that we built along with the school district, uh, looking at the, the beautiful housing that was uh, developed there. And so it's, it's, again, just an exciting time for the city of Santa Ana. The smart meters that we just uh, went ahead and des designated, um, you know, every big city, destination city has uh, a, a place uh, has ways to implement ways to be able to make their uh, their cities or downtowns more um, more friendly to visitors, and we're, we're taking steps. We're coming into you know 21st century, which is a great thing. Again, uh, just simple good things going on uh, with the city of Santa Ana. Uh, you know, we also face challenges, and 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 it's 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 important to make sure to acknowledge and recognize those as well. This this weekend, we had some incidences, as was referenced before by one of the members of the council. Uh, one of those was a violent incident that took place literally across the street from my home. And it's, it's a sobering reminder. Um, it, it's, it's a place that, that uh, my family and I have chosen to intentionally live in uh, to be able to be a part of the solution in, in some of these uh, ch more challenging neighborhoods. And uh, it's just something that, that I, I uh, uh, remind us out ourselves as a council, or our, our, our city manager, or our police chief, is that let, let's, let's make sure to celebrate the wins, uh, but let's also make sure to, to uh, be intentional about uh, creative uh, solutions to turn around some of these tough neighborhoods in town. We're, we're making strides to that. 
uh, to that effect, but sometimes some of these instances uh, remind us that there's still uh, a ways to go. Uh, so let's continue to invest, but let's also make sure that we're working with the neighbors out there, working at uh, coming up with solutions, supporting the after-school programs, the mentoring programs, the neighborhood cleanups, um, identifying some of these hotspot neighborhoods or, or uh, uh, neighborhood improvement areas, as has been mentioned, uh, within the strategic plan so that every year we can go ahead and, and move forward uh, with that. Um, and along those lines, this next uh, week, um, a couple of, uh, about a month or so ago, Councilwoman Martinez mentioned this initiative of the faith community. Uh, that we've mentioned it a few times, but I just kind of wanted to give an update because I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, the city of Compton, a number of, of, uh, of uh, uh, church pastors and, 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 and leaders and community residents have been working together uh, to, to take some significant steps to just clean up the neighborhood and reinvest in the, in the neighborhoods throughout the city. Uh, and uh, next week, we're going to be uh, about, about 10 of us uh, or so are going to be going out uh, to learn from this model and, and see what we could do to, to, to bring it out. So I just want to thank you, Councilwoman Martinez, for, for that challenge, for bringing, us, uh, 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 bringing this to, to, to the attention of, of some of those in our community. And, uh, and hopefully we'll be able to, to, to continue to take that model and, and, and others to continue to improve our city, particularly in some of those, those challenging areas, and be able to celebrate the wins there as well. With that, have a great night. Thank you. Councilor Michelle Martinez, please. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to um, just start off. I, I want to thank, you know, I, since it is Public Works Week, I do want to thank William um, Galvez. He's our acting Public Works Director. A lot of times, you know, I, and I know William, typically when you come up here, whether it be with the Bristol folks or with active transportation, we tend to beat you up, you know, but I, what, what I have to say is that you're a man of integrity. And, and you're, you're, uh, you're a man that, uh, of your profession, you know what you're doing. And I just want to let you know that coming from, from me. There's times where I do get frustrated, um, certainly, but I'll tell you that the business community, whether it be the Bristol folks or others, they have you know, called when they, when they are calling me about the Bristol issue, and the first thing that they say is that we really appreciate William and his staff, and William knows what he's talking about. And so I just wanted to let you know that people in the community are talking positively about you and that you are doing a great job. Um, and, you know, your staff is incredible with the resources that you have. You guys do amazing things. And, you know, today we approved the uh, first active transportation coordinator position. That's a historic where we're going to be focusing on, 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 on public safety as it deals with pedestrians, as it deals with cyclists, and all other modes of mobility here in the city as we move forward with our streetcar. Um, you know, having that active transportation coordinator is going to be very key. We, uh, re OCTA recently uh, um, just hired their active transportation coordinator. SCAG last year hired theirs. And so we're going to be able to work not only at the regional level from, from the Southern California level, but from OCTA and now here within the city. And so we're very fortunate and very positioned to receive tons of money as we move forward with all our plans, and that's what I'm excited about. I want to thank our staff. They worked really hard. I want to thank Jorge for really on the eighth floor working with um, Public Works and Tag and his staff. You know, these folks are applying for 10 grants for the active transportation program at the state level. That is not easy, over $6 million. Most cities are applying two to three, maybe four. If you're a big city like Los Angeles, they're certainly applying for a lot, but for a city of our size to be applying for 10 grants, and I'll tell you that we are gonna be extremely competitive, and I know that the great work that they do, I know we're gonna receive, if not all that money, because of, of, of the application process and, and the thinking that they put through within all 10 of those applications. I hope that as we move forward that we work very closely with KidWorks, the other um, um, organizations that we have out there with Safe Routes to School, which we plan on doing, the safety uh, campaign awareness element. You know, there is um, um, a study coming out. I think if it didn't come out today, it is coming out either tomorrow or Friday, but Santa Ana, again, is ranked number 20 in the U.S. of pedestrian fatalities. You know, we're at the top of the list again. And so all the work that we're doing here today really just indicates that we're making a commitment to improving the safety of our community. Out of those 10 projects, um, Tag or Jorge, I want to say seven of those are for safety improvements. 
at, at least seven of the ten are for safety improvements within safe routes to schools. Um, and so, you know, we are moving in the right direction. And again, I just want to thank you for your guys' leadership. I want to thank um, um, Director Moet and his staff, Jeannie Hurados, who's in the back, for your guys' great commitment. Today, as Councilman Benavides mentioned, we were at the Garfield uh, Exercise Park. You know, I remember six, seven years ago when I showed uh, Director Moet the article, um, you know, of an exercise park, and I'm not sure if it was Al Monte or another city in Los Angeles when they were doing those exercise parks and, you know, show that to Mr. Moet. And certainly soon enough, I think it was two or three years later, as soon as we got funding, Mr. Moet, you know, was able to go and get these folks, these contractors who are locally here in the city, Greenfield, to do some. And then there was an, a, another, I think we started our very first one, um, Director Moet wet at the is it the maple bike trail um it's not as durable as greenfield but now we as we have this um um, you know, this company, and we're starting to do these exer exercise parks. It's not because of the commitment of this council or the, or, or the advocacy from this community. It's really the staff that see that we're committed to doing this, and they're going out there and facilitating and implementing it. And Gerardo finds whatever creative ways he possibly can to make it happen. And so I want to thank you and your staff for, for continuing to just do as, as you do continually with very little. And, and it, it is noticed, and, you know, we tend to give um, Di um, Director Moet a lot of kudos because, you know, he has a fun job. He gets to do the parks and recreation, community service, and the libraries. But let me tell you, eight years ago when we started here, and look, I was the chair of the Parks and Rec Commission 10 years ago, and I'll tell you that there was no money for parks and recreation and libraries or any of that sort. We cut, we cut, we cut. And I just remember, you know, his face, he was just no smiles. And now there is smiles. And so I think it's positive. And I do want to thank my colleagues, you know, uh, Reina and, 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 and um, um, Amesqua and Tina Hedo, who sit on the Parks, Rec, and Education Committee that took the lead. You know, prior to that, it was myself, Councilman Sarmiento, and Tina Hedo. And, you know, they're continuing the lead to push that agenda. And so I just want to thank you guys as we move forward. All these strategies are going to be going to your committee that we continue to support our staff and making sure we're able to get the things done for you know the community and when we talk about our youth we're actually helping their parents as well and so I think sometimes we exclude the family and it's really about the entire unit that we need to, to, to think about and so when we're helping a young person we're actually helping the entire family um, and then I just want to conclude uh, with this you know I, I um, tend to, 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 to not say this much but to, to say this, um, and, 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 and what I'm going to state here um, is some, it's something that is not easy to say. You know, there's seven of us up here on this dais. We're not always going to agree. We're always going to have difference of opinion. And I certainly have, you know, um, you know, my differences of opinion with our mayor. But I've all, you know, I've always respected you. In public, always call you mayor, always call you guys council members. And we sit up here and sometimes we do bite our tongues because at the end of the day, we represent the community. And we are working collectively, even though we may not agree on everything, we are working collectively as one. There are other councils where they're not this diplomatic or there are other mayors where are not being treated as our mayor here today. I'll tell you, and I've told him in the past, that we do have our differences. But at the end of the day, he's still my mayor. He still represents the city. And you know we're going to disagree. But if we do disagree, we're going to disagree and close doors and move forward. But we respect one another. And I think that's important for the community to know that everything that we do up here is in the interest of the people. Because we're human beings, too. And a lot of times people forget about that. You come up here sometimes and, 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 some, and you have every right to, 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 to scrutinize us. But at the end of the day, we are humans. We are going to err. Um, and we are going to you know, go at it with one another. But what's important is that this council is very respectful. 
and we're very respectful to our staff. We may disagree with some of the things our staff do, but we're not going to call them out here publicly. And I think that's important, and many times we don't share this, and we don't talk about it. But you, um, And I see Adam from the Voice of OC. He goes to a lot of council meetings, and I think he knows there's a huge difference what we, how we were four or five years ago to where we're at today. I'm very proud to sit up here with all of you. And we are doing some great things. We still have a lot of work ahead of ourselves. We need to continue to respect one another. Certainly, we have difference of opinion, and we should always have that. And most importantly, we always need to deliberate here in the dais. We represent the public. We need to be transparent. And so when we're going to want to deal with strategic plans or appropriations, we should do it up here with a smile. And yes, it may pain us that we have to go through every item, but at the end of the day, this is what we were elected to do, is to go through these issues. Let me tell you, the community went through that. With every forum they went to, certainly when they were in groups, they didn't all agree. But they sat there and they worked with one another. And this is what we have to do in the public forum sometimes. And so I just want to thank you guys. I know it wasn't pleasant, something that we didn't want to go through, our staff didn't want to go through, but it's important to do it. And so with that being said, have a great evening. Thank you for those words, uh, Councilor Martinez. Councilor Ben Sarmiento, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I want to echo a lot of what was said by my colleague. I know um, many of us sit on regional boards and commissions. And boy, I've seen some of the most disrespectful people treat their colleagues in a horrible way. And I've never seen that here. So um, it's a testament to restraint. It's a testament, I think, to respect. And so I think all of us respect one another. And um, just to follow up, I think tonight we did something very historic, something great. I think something that all of us were um, waiting for for many, many years was to p pass a plan, I think, that was going to give us a roadmap into the future of what the priorities were and to reflect on what was important to, um, to our residents. So we shouldn't lose sight of how we got here. We got here as a concept, and we saw that other cities were doing it. We saw that it was important to do, and our residents wanted to do it. And I think, as, we, as I was reminded, it's so far back that we had a choice to make. We could have done this in a closed room, and we were voted and vested with this authority to do it. And we could have just said, look, let's carve it up this way amongst the seven of our priorities that we have. We didn't do that. We chose to do exactly the opposite, go out to you, spend the time, spend the resources, and see what you all had to say. That's why it made it difficult. I just want to uh, you know, repeat again to my colleagues it's okay to deliberate. It's okay to disagree. It's okay to be up here and say, you know what? I think academics is more important or just as important as athletics. I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. I think it's okay to say, you know what? We should think about our 100-year-old sewer system that's going to fail at some point. Should we think about how we can fund it? And, that, and, and it should, we shouldn't take it as a personal offense or attack because it may reduce some funding um, allocation to something that's important to us. And Mr. City Manager, I've got to tell you, we're, we're um, showing an incredible amount of deference to you tonight. And I want you to understand that. And I know that you don't take this lightly, but many of my colleagues completely deferred to you tonight because they believe that you... Um, did the best job you could in presenting a solid plan. And I'm going I'm to be the first one to say, look, we could have been very capricious and said, three of us don't agree. And then nothing passes and nothing happens. But I think in the spirit of cooperation, we all said, look, let's do this because we want, to, we want it to work and we don't want the community to, stall, to be stalled on this. But Again, I don't think this was the best deliberative process that I've seen. We could have done it much better. And I know you're going to get us there. But I think this was, I think this was a misstep in, the, in this plan, in approving this plan. Because I think what, what was missing in this plan was the ability for all of us to place value judgments on what we thought was important. And, I, and, it's, a crucial, and it's a crucial flaw. So if we can work on that, um, and maybe it's because we haven't, we don't have much experience in spending money with the exception of our mayor because he's been here in good times. <laughs> and I'm not saying this to be <laughs> facetious, but he's been here long enough to experience good times. The rest of us have been here during very Recession. horrible times. We've been here when, when we came on in 06 and 07, the first thing we were told to do was you got to cut 
this program. You have to cut these many employees. This has to go away. So we don't have much experience in allocating money. We'll learn, I guess, but there's got to be a better way than just seeing something that's given to us by staff and said, rubber stamp it. That's not the way democracy is. And I want to, you know, I, I hope my colleagues understand that, that it's okay to disagree respectfully. It's, it's, that's not a bad thing, especially in the eyes of the public. There's nothing wrong with that. That's exactly what we're supposed to do. That's the democratic process that we all agreed to perform up here, or else we shouldn't be up here. If you don't like doing this publicly, then we shouldn't be sitting in these seats, and we should delegate it to somebody else, or somebody else should be up here. So as pleased as I am, as happy as I am, there is some level of disappointment on my, on, on my part because we could have done this better. But we'll get there. I'm confident that we'll get there because I think we made a very good step tonight. I want to thank all of them. Uh, all our staff, the public who participated, my colleagues who, 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 who spent time on this. I think it's a, it's a good first step, um, and let's continue to improve from here. And I want to thank um, staff for putting uh, our adjournment in memory of, um, of Officer Roberto Sanchez, who was a resident of our city but was a Los Angeles police officer who lost his life recently. Um, I apologize for not bringing present at his services um, that were held here in the city as well, but I know our chief was there, I'm sure, or, or, or folks from the department. So I know, Mr. Mayor, you're going to be adjourning in his memory, so I'd like to thank you for that as well. And wish We'll be happy to do so. Mayor Pro Tem, Saltina Heddle. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it's been a long evening, but that's all right. That's what we're here for. Uh, today we had 65B come up. We, had, uh, we voted on 65B. There were a couple of speakers who I think misrepresented what's going on here. Um, if you look at um, the, what, what the council gets paid today uh, compared to 1950, and the reason I use 1950 is because that's, where, that's when the salaries for council members were set here in the city of Santa Ana. Just to give you an idea, Back then, in 1950, gas prices were 26 cents a gallon, and a hamburger at McDonald's was 15 cents. And the council has not received an increase since then. And part of it is it's because it's an unpopular thing. People will come up and start to grandstand and talk about, oh, my goodness, you know, you could be allocating money here. The reality is, and, and you know, uh, most of us here are heading into our final term. So the reality is if we want good people to run, you got to pay them. And we're not talking about paying a large amount. We're talking about being consistent with other cities across the nation. This is, let me tell you something. This is not an easy job. It has taken a lot of my health. It has taken a lot of my time. But I signed up for it, and I agree. But I'm just saying that many people would prefer to go do other things and at sometimes just throw their hands up and walk away from this. So you need to have some type of uh, compensation that is fair. That's all that's asked, that, that, that is being asked in this. And at the end of the day, we're not giving ourselves a raise. If the citizens of this, if this community want to increase the salary to the, to the regular, to the same levels as others, they're going to vote yes. And if they say no, they vote no. So I don't see what the harm is in bringing it up for the voters to decide. If the voters can go up or down on it. Um, but the main issue here is, is the campaign finance issue that is extremely confusing in the city. I've never heard of anything like this. When I was with the school district, the, lar the, the maximum you could receive in a campaign contribution was $1,000, period. But that did not exclude you from voting. Here in the city of Santa Ana, the charter it was almost created as a, as a gotcha uh, kind of law. Even the, the person that, uh, one of the main organizations, and I, I can't recall the name right now, that was it? Shirley, Shirley yeah. Grendel, who's the watchdog on this, said this is the most confusing uh, form of, of you know, governance as far as campaign finance goes that she's ever seen. There's nothing else like it, she says, in the whole state. So we just need to fix it, just to make it clear and make it you know, uh, fair. We've, we're about transparency, so I'm just giving you a little bit on that. So uh, it's, it's, it's little cleanups, you know, clean, up, clean house and making sure that we're in the right place. So now enough of the politics. Let's talk about some good news. Uh, Sierra Preparatory Academy, I want to congratulate them. They started their first speech and debate team about three years ago. They won their first tournament in three years. Uh, one, of my, one of my former students coaches that team. She went to Cal State Long Beach, was a, a multinational finalist, and she's decided to teach here in Santa Ana. And so that's something that uh, has increased their test scores. They have about 80 students on that team. It's a junior high school team. Also, 
Um, I don't know if you noticed, but there's a little, little water jug up here. It says, fill it from your tap. This was filled to the brim when this meeting started. I'm floating right now. But the reason I'm floating you went to the rest. Is, because, <laughs> is because the water is just so good. It's the best tasting water in the United States. I just want to keep to fill it from your tap. It should be on every window in downtown. We have the best tasting water in Santa Ana. And hey, I've proven that today. And so have many of my colleagues. But I just wanted to, uh, to thank the staff for those nice little mugs and making sure that we fill from our own tap. Uh, we're heading into a, a, a moment here where kids are really excited. You start to see the, the cream of the crop rise you know, to the top here. And, and that is that we have um, our Little League Baseball uh, City Tournament is now underway. So all of our youth that is involved in Little League are competing against each other here in the city of Santa Ana. Then the top two teams advance to complete in District 30, which is teams, uh, teams from Orange, Tustin, Villa Park, and I, th I think that's pretty much it, those areas there, and then they continue to advance. But it's an exciting time for a lot of youngsters. Also, Pony, I don't know if uh, uh, Councilmember Benavides is not here, but last year the Pony Baseball All-Star Team advanced uh, all the way to regionals. And uh, they beat Tustin, Anaheim, I think it was uh, Placentia. As a matter of fact, I think uh, Councilman Benavides put a little wager on and against the mayor of Anaheim, and he won uh, because our Pony team won that championship. So they're playing as well. Um, special congratulations to one, uh, one of our top organizations here in the city, travel ball organizations, the Santa Ana Braves. They won their first tournament that was hosted at, at John Adams Park this weekend. They had over 18 teams participate. And this team has been developing for three years, and it's now you're starting to see the fruits of that. Um, also, uh, this weekend, the Mexican delegation is coming in to compete at the Memorial Day tournament, uh, as well as the Canadian delegation. Poor Canadian delegation. They got mercy all four games last year, but I think they'll do better this year. Maybe they'll recruit some kids from Seattle or something. But anyhow, it's always a pleasure to have them come around and shop at our stores and, and stay at our hotels. And with that, Mr. Mayor, I am finished. Thank you very much, Mayor Pro Tem. I just have a couple items. One is I want to congratulate our, our staff and in particular our consultant because they worked on, on a report that went to the Federal Transportation Administration. It's a federal government to basically do our locally preferred alternative and issue a document which city manager said is going to go on the streets on Friday. I believe it's Friday or sometime very, very soon. And, and the very good news is that that whole process took three days. And that sometimes can take not only weeks, it can be that you go there and they find problems with your document, it doesn't come back out. And in this case, Cordova Corporation produced a very solid document, went to the FTA, and three days we had a green light. So I think that now puts us on a, on a fast track to do our, 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 our work as it relates to receiving input on that document, coming back, approving a locally preferred alternative, going back to OCTA, and moving that street card forward. Uh, so that, uh, that's uh, one very good thing. The other is, I think, it gives us the opportunity now to start saying this project is getting more and more real, and especially around the transportation center and along the route, transit-oriented development. We, start, we need to start thinking about you know, the ability to have projects where parking is different, where densities can be much higher. I'm talking 30, 40, 50 units to an acre or more because you're going to have a different ability. You're going to have the ability for people to, to walk and to get on the, on the uh, uh, streetcar and from there to connect to the Metrolink, for example, and be up in Union Station. Or, and hopefully, you know, we're going to have some of these, uh, you know, different complete streets and bicycles and everything else. And so that, you know, starts to become a reality. And I think it's uh, an opportunity that we need to take uh, into account. And relative to good times, yes, I believe good times in many ways are here. And I know some of my colleagues earlier talked about how, you know, ever since the recession began in 2007, 2008, it's been, you know, how do we survive? And, you know, we've made it. We've had to, you know, go through a lot of rough situations, tighten our belts, 
but we not only have survived, I think we're, we're now stronger for it. You know, technology, efficiency, a lot of different things taking place. But um, now hopefully with the economy coming back and continuing to come back, I mean, we've seen it now for the last couple of years, but, but now it's, it's just continuing. I think we're getting stronger and stronger. And so with that, I just want to remind us how thankful we need to be for all the blessings that we have and just realize how fragile life can be. And in this particular case, the, the life of Robert C. Sanchez. Uh, he was a Santa Ana resident, worked for the Los Angeles Police Department. And, you know, he was involved in a chase. And apparently, while in the chase, another vehicle intentionally rammed him and ended up killing him. So, so you know, here's an officer doing his job, and now he's passed away. So... Uh, you know, I just want to make sure that the clerk uh, sends not only our condolences, but, but flowers and, uh, and, and, and a, a proclamation uh, to his family because he, wa- he was not only a resident of our city, he has a lot of friends here in our city. He was working for the LAPD and he di- you know, died in the line of duty. So I think we need to pay our respects. I thank the chief for going to the, uh, his funeral, but as a council, we're going to adjourn in his honor. So with that, this meeting is adjourned.